Hi, I'm Gary. And I'm Kate. And we like to play shit. And we like to play Fall Guys. We also like to chat with shit. We also like to chat with no. We also like to chat with cool and interesting people. So we thought, why not do balls? So we thought, why not do both at the same time? No, no, no. This, this is, is Talk Guys, guys. Ultimate, Ultimate Chatting. Chatting. Hello. And we're back. We're Hello. back. It's like you hardly went away, Kate. This is like you, you're waiting like five minute right. break between Fall Guys right. streams these days. Like yeah, away. I had some dinner like and now I'm here. We're um, killing it. <laughs> welcome to another episode of Talk Guys. I'm Gary Witter, uh, my co host Kate Stark, or should I say, Kate E. Clutch. Newly, That's what they call me. Newly crowned queen of Fall Mania. Yeah, well, sort of. I came in second in Fall Mania, and then I just did Twitch Rivals today, and I came in fourth. You came in second in Fall Mania, which was a very big deal considering the uh, quality of competition you were up against. I was a mere semi-finalist. Um, I, was, I, was, I just wanted to not embarrass myself, and I felt like I did that. I got into the semi-finals. You, however, went all the way to the finals. You were dead at one point in the semi-finals, and then in the finals, and then you pulled back. Uh, I think that's where the clutch nickname that you earned uh, came from, because you kept your composure, you kept mm -hmm. that ice water in your veins, uh, mm -hmm. and you ended up impressing a lot of um, uh, high-level Fall Guys players. And here's the other interesting statistic, the highest-ranked uh, woman ever to compete in Fall Mania. Isn't that yeah, correct? Yeah, the only woman to ever make it to the finals. Amazing. Which is quite nice. And I also like to point out that it is Kate uh, initial E, which I think stands for eSports, and then clutch is the last name. That sounds about uh, right. Kate Esports Clutch. <laughs> and then uh, Twitch Rivals Today, which was also very fun. And you did good. You did well there also, right? Yeah, my team came fourth overall, um, probably because I invited the person who beat me uh, in Fall Mania last night to be on my team today. Uh, and we came fourth. And uh, that was super fun. That's the way all to do it, is make, your, make your enemies your friends. Uh, let's, get, let's get to our uh, wonderful guest that we have tonight. We are joined by the wonderful, talented, multi-talented, I should say. Very uh, talented. Trisha Hirschberger. How are you, Trisha? Hi, guys. Thank you so Hi, much Trisha. for having me. Hello. Thank you for being here. Uh, I miss you both so much, and I'm so glad that you invited me to be on the show. This is like the perfect Friday night activity. We're thrilled Absolutely. to have you. We were just we were just commiserating before the show uh, that we all kind of became friends like almost like pretty much exactly a year ago when we all met. I mean, Kate and I already knew each other, but we both met you for the first time at TwitchCon pretty much exactly one year ago. And of course, we're not yeah. back at TwitchCon this year because of COVID, but. We can do this. This 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 will do, right? We get to hang out and play Fall Guys. Yes, we Yay. can do this. Very exciting. This is almost as good as dinners and drinks and hanging out in San Diego. Yeah. Sneaking, sneaking into a party. There's no no yeah. high end sushi restaurants or rooftop bars at rooftop the Hard Rock Hotel, or... but we'll we'll make we'll make the best of of what we have. It's the company, the com the key elements, the three of us. That's what's the same, and that's what matters. Exactly. Um, it's uh, and that also reminds me. My wife Leah just pointed out in the chat, and it is uh, Kate's birthday tomorrow as well. So she's doing a special birthday stream tomorrow uh, that you should definitely stop by. But for right now, uh, in advance of tomorrow, Kate, very happy birthday to you. Thank you. Wonderful. I appreciate that. Should we play happy some? Birthday. Go ahead. Happy birthday. Oh, I just say I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. I haven't had a pandemic birthday before, and I don't think many people have. But it means I'm just gonna be sitting and streaming and playing video games all day. So. You're all invited to my birthday party if you would like to come by. Pandemic birthday sounds like the best all-girl punk band that I've, oh, ever, yeah. that I've never heard. I would buy their vinyl <laughs> record for sure. Yeah. Should we uh, should we get into it? Should we play some Fall Guys? That's that's Let's... the premium content that the good people here in our chats have come to see. I am going to um, uh, jump over here to our squad screen, squad stream uh, page. Which oh by the way, and if you're not already, if you don't see it, please refresh your browser you'll see in each of our channels you'll see a button that says watch in uh squad mode and that will enable you to have like a multi-cam uh view of everyone's uh channels and whichever one you click on kind of becomes the main primary window and you can chat in whatever chat um that is so that's really cool we have the updated crown count 28 for me mm -hmm. i've not seen a lot of movement lately i've been on 28 since monday i have just had a rough week in the fall guys world no crowns for me kate however uh, what, four yesterday during Fall Mania? One more today? Is that right? Four, Yeah, four yesterday during Fall Mania, one pre-show, and then one today. So we're at 55, I think. And uh, poor Trisha, 
still sitting on that big fat zero. We got to get you your first <laughs> crown tonight. Oh my gosh, that would be so amazing. Well, that's what we do here on Talk Guys. We get we get crowns and we get crowns for our guests. <laughs> and we even get first uh, crowns for our guests. We had a famous moment here on the show where Amy Okuda uh, got her first ever crown. And uh, maybe we can do it for you uh, tonight as well. Should we, uh, should we yes. jump right in? Yes, let's All right. do it. Ready up. Let's play some Fall Guys. Now, Trisha, I actually have a question for you right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Which is that, as we mentioned, my birthday is tomorrow. Your birthday was just a, a few weeks back. It was, well, yeah, my birthday was the 15th. Yeah, so um, any suggestions on one, how to spend spend your birthday in quarantine, uh, in a pandemic, and two, anything I should do to celebrate my 30th, because it's my 30th birthday tomorrow. It's a big one. Happy 30th! Thank you. Um, any suggestions? I yeah, uh, pick food that you like to eat and make sure you have it in or you order it in. And Sounds good. anything anything you like to do, just try to like treat yourself. I got I got super lucky that a bunch of people, um, like people that I know decided to do like drive by waves Cute. and stuff like that, which is really fun. And so, I if I recall you cooked cool. yourself like a really lush steak dinner, didn't you? I did. I <laughs> I cooked a big steak dinner and um yeah, it was super fun. I'm like right, well, so nervous that we're not all in the same game. Okay, I think- No, we're think all in we're the same seesaw. game. We're kicking off with the dreaded seesaw. It is at least the standard version, not one of the uh, remixed uh, variants that could really cause trouble. This is what killed me um, yesterday at Formania, Kate, as I um, had a really bad seesaw, uh, got knocked out in the first round and just was never able to, reco never able to recover that point deficit. That's what happened to me uh, in Twitch Rivals today is no. I was heading towards the, I think it was on Seesaw. I was heading towards the finish line and someone stream sniped me. No. Saw that I was competing and they came and griefed me across the finish line. So no. I did not qualify. Now, do you think that, now that, do you think that was a deliberate grief? Cause they knew you were a, a Twitch rivals competitor? A hundred percent. How did, how would they know that? Like what, uh, what if they, would they were watching doing? Twitch rivals or my stream or Grand Pooh Bear's yeah. stream? Cause this was in like the semifinals, like championship, whatever. Um, they, they would have seen me and right. I, I got sniped right at the finish line. I was 43 of 43 and they pulled me back right at the and last second. Hurt you. So I couldn't Man, cross you must have been furious. And then I, I got eliminated. I was pretty bummed, I'll be honest. So these stream snipers, because I have heard of this in back when I played PUBG, I know stream sniping was a thing, because I used to see Ninja and these guys complaining about it. Are they basically watching your stream and then joining up into their own matchmaking lobby when they see you do it in the hope they'll end up in your game? Yes. Okay. This is a whole and then they just, I don't know what, like, how sad these people are, because that's where they get their jollies, but, um, yeah, that was the intentional shutdown. So it, it right. either was like somebody who just wanted me out or somebody wanted one of the other streamers to go further than me. Who could possibly that, want you out? Well, I don't know. That that sealed the deal for me that I was eliminated at that point. So Yeah, again, so Seesaw basically screwed us. I mean, you got screwed mostly more by another player, but Seesaw was where we both met our uh, untimely ends in tournaments this week. And it's on my favorite level too. It's, is he it still your favorite God, level after all this heartache pathetic. that it keeps causing us? I think so. Oh my God. Trisha, do you have a favorite level? Uh, I, might not, I might not qualify. I don't know. I'm just barely going to qualify, I think. I just, yeah, I've had a terrible, barely. I'm not going to qualify for sure. You can do it, Gary. I might oh, have we to drag us all back. were spectating another Gordon Freeman. I thought we were spectating no, you. No, I'm not going to qualify. I have to pull the first round card and drag us back to the lobby. Sorry. That's okay. We have a rule here, um, Trisha, where if, if one of us doesn't make it out of the first round, we all go, we all return to the lobby. And I like that. Over. Okay, so I'm gonna yeah. exit right now. Leave no man behind. I hate being the person to have us bring it bring us back. That's embarrassing for me. But first game of the night, we got to work the bugs out of the system. It was a warm up. Um, Kate, the other thing I would suggest that you do for your birthday is see if you can find a local drive-in. I don't have a driver's license. Oh, are you quarantined bubbled with anybody that does? No. Oh, wow. Okay. It's all very sad over here. I was meant to get my driver's license um, in March and my test got canceled because, oh, we got pulled got back to the lobby. I to the I lobby. Kicked. I need to reinvite okay. Trish. I'll do that right um, now. Hold on. Basically, my test got pushed because of the pandemic. And mm -hmm. then I just went to rebook because they finally opened up tests again. 
And I yeah. have to wait until middle of 2021. What? Yep. No. Yep. Because everything is got awful. canceled for like six months, so they just moved everything forward. No. Okay. I'm going to change my outfit because I'm telling you, this Gordon Freeman has not been working for me. I'm going to be an astronaut. You know what else I hear is cool that only recently came on my radar? Um, Airbnb experiences. Yeah, those are fun. What's that? I've done those in different cities. It's like instead of renting a hotel, you you go and do a thing, like pottery in you know S Sweden or something. You'd take like a pottery class with a local, or you do a photography tour in the Netherlands. Okay. Yeah, but you do it all from the safety of your home. Yeah. So there's like the this is the distanced version. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I've not heard of that. But yeah, yeah while you, you're traveling, they're fun. If you did that already, um, then let me think what else. Okay, do you have do you have plans for your birthday stream tomorrow? Is there like a structure? Do you have activities? Do you have, do you know what you're gonna do on the stream, or are you just gonna see how it goes? I'm gonna see how it goes. I know that there's a theme, and I've done a special overlay, and I have special alerts, and the theme is early 2000s. Nice. I'm one, I'm, so because I'm trying to think, what what does early 2000s mean, like in terms of culture? It pop means culture? it was. It means it was the last time I was properly happy. Oh wow, that got that got dark. <laughs> hey. that, that took a turn. No, it's hey. uh, you know, just like crappy pop music and like terrible word art in uh, Microsoft. Just like it was a simpler time. So you would have been in your teens, right? Early two thousands. I would have been ten years old. Okay. My goodness. Spice Girls, Britney Spears, all the all the good stuff. Yeah, we did talk about some of this when you, because I remember you telling me about the theme, and we talked. Because I remember talking about the Spice Girls and who our favorite Spice Girls were. Trisha, yeah. who was your favorite Spice Girl, or who is? Um, I guess Posh Spice. I don't get because it because I thought she was beautiful. She I is. Don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't really super into the Spice Girls. Were you? Were you in the right age range though when they first came out? Were you like? Were you? Would you have been their target demo when the Spice Girls first hit the scene? I don't know. Maybe I was a weird kid. Uh, like. What do you mean? I listened to a lot of show tunes. Yeah. Like Broadway kind I, of shows. <laughs> yeah, okay. I listened to a lot of show tunes. And I listened to, um, like, I was into whatever nerdy bubblegum pop was going on at the time. Like, I really a, liked Hanson for a long time. Were you a theater kid or something? I'm trying to figure out how you got to the show tunes. I was, yeah. I was a big You were in a Shakespeare kid. company, weren't you? Um, I did. I actually did a summer internship with the Pennsylvania Shakespeare Company. The Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival, yeah. My researcher strikes again. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Were you so? Were you like a drama club nerd in in school? Like, were you that kind of kid? I was when I was uh, when I was eight. Oh my god! I just got flung off the thing. Um, I I know that's what the show is all about. Um, <laughs> I uh, yes, I did drama club whenever I could. I mostly did theater camp in the summers and community theater outside of school. Yes. See, this is why um, we get along so well because same. Yes, I love that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I mean, I wasn't good at sports. <laughs> <laughs> Same. And yep. I was just kind of a kid that was like, like I saw Tom Hanks in Big, and I was like, dude, that guy gets paid to play all the time, and I am all about that life. And so then I thought, I was like, wait, actors are just like playing make believe and getting paid for it. I want that job. So it does at sound that pretty time, good, right? So at that, that time, I uh, yeah, then I started like asking my mom if she could take me to auditions and. She was like, "What?" Because I was like five or something. Oh, I got a tail, and then it got taken. So you back. went. So you knew that you wanted to be like a performer or, or or someone in front of an audience or a camera, like when you were five years old. Yeah, when I was really little. Like I, I remember I used to watch uh, Gone with the Wind, and I'd like, I, for one year, for when I was really little, one year I asked to be Scarlett O'Hara for Halloween, and I made my dad dress up as Rhett Butler, and I was like, <laughs> now when we walk. Ask the judges, I need you to say, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. It's very important. It. Yeah, That's I dedication. Was, I was a special kind of kid. <laughs> we qualify, but not because of anything I did. I finished that round without a tail, so I did not do my um do I my also finished there. without a tail. But we all qualified. I also did. I, yeah, I, I had a tail. All right. Kate pulls us through. Um, Trisha, do you have a favorite musical? 
Uh, my favorite musical for a long time it was Rent. Mm. I was the right age for Rent to be awesome. Okay. Um, and then uh, Aida probably displaced Rent. Wow. And now it's probably Les Mis. See, mine were all like Kiss Me Kate and Funny Thing oh, Happened the on the Way to the Forum. Musical. Yeah, the really old school musicals. That was my jam. Oh, yeah. No, I, I liked those. And they, like, I think the first musical I ever saw was Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dream Dreamcoat. <laughs> and then the second musical I ever saw was Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, and then I'm trying to think. Then after that, it was like Forum and, you know, kind of some. Oh, this Griefer! Get off! Oh, no! Stupid! Oh, What's, did you get grief? You no, you're still on. You're still on. Oh, oh no! Was it no, the... I'm gone. I griefed myself through a gap, and I'm done. Yay! I think Trisha was talking you? about griefing made me nervous. Was it the cat? The cat robot? The cat mech? Yes. Um, yep. That it was grabbing me earlier too. Okay, so watch out! Watch out for Robo Cat. Yeah. Don't Let's see be if I can lock in on uh, Trisha's character here. The little wolf. Here we go. One four seven two. Wolf. Yeah. Wolf with blue underpants. You it's told Trisha your theory on wolves. Uh, not all, um, not all uh, wolves are grievers, but all grievers are wolves, or the other way around. I can't remember. If you're a wolf, you're probably a griefer. Is 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 the point I'm oh, getting at? Oh, it's just the coolest one that I have. <laughs> so you are I the exception to the rule, but I don't trust wolves. Oh, I don't trust dog. ninjas, and I don't trust monkeys. I don't trust pigeon. I don't trust any of the animal skins. Yeah. Pig uh, two pigeons, cans. monkeys. Whoa. Yep. Any birds, well, my, dinosaurs. Yeah. My other backup is pigeon. No, you're a griefer. What? You're gonna you're gonna be carrying around that bag. People. Are, I mean, maybe it's a good thing though because people are gonna give you a wide berth. They don't want to get griefed, even though you're. That's what you want. You just want these other beans to stay away from you. You hate I, to see it. Oh, I wish that I could say that. I wish that I could say I was that cool. But no, unfortunately, I'm the person that's like, please. Oh! We lost, we like, lost Trisha. Now it's Kate left. Go, Kate, go. There she goes. Go, Kate, go. There she goes. Yeah, I miss the theater. One of the things I miss about living in London is having access to all that amazing uh, theater. We don't have mm -hmm. quite the same scene here in San Francisco. Yeah, I am. Um, I grew up in Philly, so I could just take the train to New York City. Oh, oh yeah, because yeah, it's really not that far, is it? No, it's like a three-hour train ride. Um, so when I was really little, I was going into Philadelphia to see theater. But by the time I hit like middle school, or I guess maybe junior high, high school, I was so involved with my summer theater camp that we would take buses up to New York uh, to see Broadway shows. That's Fairly cool. Fairly regularly. It was very cool. And it's something I really miss once I move to the West Coast. It's just not having Broadway so accessible. I really, so silly, I really but... don't go all that often, but every time I do go, I always come out of the theater going like, why don't we do that more often? Like going to the theater mm -hmm. is great. Oh, what was the so last fun. musical you each saw? Ugh, I saw Margaritaville and it was awful. Is that a Jimmy Buffett thing? Yes. Oh, I love is Jimmy it like Buffett. the music of Jimmy Buffett set to yes. a, 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 oh my God. That was the theme of my birthday party oh, last wow. year was Margaritaville. I'm not even me. kidding. Okay, can uh, this is all I have to tell you to tell you how bad this musical is, and maybe you would love it, but they have a guy whose whole, his, the whole reason his character is in the show is to walk around looking for a salt shaker. I love it. So I'm here for it. For his margarita? The, uh, no, just, the last just shaker so salt. Different. To the last shaker of salt. Oh, lyric, okay, I get there's it. There's like a reason for I'm not, it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really that expert on the Jimmy Buffett oeuvre. So uh. <laughs> so I'm not going to get all the lyrical saw. references in a Broadway version. Okay, what was the last one that you enjoyed then? Uh, what came through recently that was good? So my uh, my husband and I were doing the Pantages season tickets here in LA. So that we would be, we would have tickets like every two or three months to see a show. And so it oh, forced perfect. us to get a sitter and do a date night and still go see theater because my husband used to be a musical theater actor. That's what he did professionally for years. Oh, wow. um, so yeah, he and I both are like the theater kids. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to think what we saw before that that was good, but Margaritaville was our last one. And then we had tickets for Hamilton the day that everything shut down. 
Hamilton's the last one that I saw as well, actually. I still haven't seen it. I'm going to have to, at some point, we're going to sit down and watch the Disney Plus movie version, which is as good as it's going to get for a while, I guess. It's good. It's, it's good. very um, good. At least it's, yeah. you know, the original cast. That's kind of what put me off after Lin-Manuel Miranda stopped doing it. I was like, I'm sure it's still great, but it's not like the version. So at least I with mean, the Disney version, you get that. Uh, the person that I saw playing Hamilton in Seattle when I saw it was very... Oh, Leaf Show, by the way. Uh, it looks. Oh, Leaf Show. Oh yeah. Did you I got a oh shit! Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Um, it looked like Lin Manuel Miranda. Interesting. So I was like, I couldn't even. I knew it wasn't him, but I at some point couldn't even tell the difference. Got it. Oh, I got a new emote. That's exciting. Oh, nice. But yeah, so I never got to see Hamilton in person. So. I called the morning of and I was like, is the show still on for tonight? Because if it's not, I'm not going to make dinner reservations and I'll cancel the sitter. And they were like, no, no, it's still on. It's still on. And then at one o'clock, they like LA wide ordinance of no big gatherings went out. So then right. at one, I called the theater back and I was like, now are you shut down for the night? And they were like, yes. <laughs> wow. So you just missed yeah. it. I just missed it. Um, but you know, better to be safe. Um, but it was still a bummer because then it was like 1.30 in the afternoon and I was canceling the sitter and canceling dinner reservations. And, you know, then it was like, well, we don't know when Hamilton performances will be back up. So I guess we'll reschedule your tickets for the summer. Oh, Connection I guess we'll error. I got to remake the party again. Man, they're, 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 having, they're having some uh, issues tonight, I think. Weird. I played a game of Egg Scramble earlier just practicing and it was like the glitchiest, wackiest thing I'd ever seen. Eggs were flying around, not obeying any kind of laws of physics. It was nutty. Trisha, nutty, in, the, nutty. in the same kind of topic of theater, did you ever do any like backstage work at all? Um, A little bit. So I, when I went to college, I majored in theater. And as part of that theater program, any main stage show you didn't get cast in, you had to do 20 hours a week of crew. So getting cast was like a double kick in the boob. Uh, because you were bummed you didn't get cast, and then you were also bummed you had to be on crew. Uh, so the, the thinking behind it was this way, at least we're teaching you something employable. So if you get out in the real world and can't get cast, at least you can do wardrobe or props oh. or lighting or box office manager or whatever else that you're spending your time doing. Um, so I did mostly props department, wardrobe, uh, which is how I learned to sew, which I now use for cosplay. And uh, and box office management because computers. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you do any behind the scenes stuff? Yeah, that's actually what I went to university for. No way. Yeah, I got like a scholarship in it. Went into a very specialized theater program. Um, Where did you go? Uh, to a school in Canada. We'll just leave it at okay. that. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it was uh, it was great until it was very very expensive, and then I had to uh, drop out because it was so expensive. Get that. Yeah. No. I was very lucky that I uh, got an academic scholarship to my college. So I was not uh, paying for tuition. I still had to pay for room and board, uh, but not for tuition. See, that's very nice. And you, you touched really quickly on your cosplay. You do yeah. quite a bit of cosplay, don't you? I used to. <laughs> I used well, you to used to, it. but I mean, it, it's still like a lot of your, um, how do I say it, nerd pride? is kind of on display in your social media and your outfits and stuff. I've noticed you have a lot of really cool, um, like, themed dresses and t-shirts and stuff like that. Yeah, I try to rock the uh, geek chic look, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, I feel like I grew up at a time where it wasn't cool to like any of the stuff that I liked. And if you did want to buy something that showed off the stuff that you liked, it was like a men's huge t-shirt. Um, so now the fact that like there are companies who specialize in women's geek fashion, I am all about it. <laughs> so it's my whole closet. It's not like it's really funny when I get booked to host for a show that's like you can't have any IP or any themed thing in your wardrobe. And I'm right. like, well, then I you're like, what do I have? Budget because I don't <laughs> have anything else. <laughs> that's it. That's that's what I'm working oh. with. Oh, what is it going to take to get across this? These seesaws are just not going to line up for me. There we go. Finally. Jeez, that so took a while. Seesaws. Waited a long time for that to line up just right. I don't. Oh, no. This is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. Go, 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 go. All right. Just barely. Well, not barely, but I made it. Easy qual. I'm going to give Paulette an easy qual. 
I love that when, the, the competitor last night had the easy qual jingle. I was yeah. That, it was, that was fun. Mm, 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 mm. I qualified and I'm feeling good. Okay, you're across. We're all good? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're good. Heck yeah. Uh, but yeah, right. so I mean, it, yeah, geek chic fashion is like... Some, uh, <laughs> T Boyce in chat says that even when I was in school, geek fashion was not cool. Uh, I'm sure if I was in school, it would still be not cool. But as an adult, I don't have to worry about the mean kids in school anymore. So, uh, you know, I do what I want. I mean, I'm still afraid of teenagers in school. I don't, I don't know if that's just me, but like if I see a group of teenagers like at the mall or something, I'm like, oh, I, I get scared of them. Really? Yeah, I'm intimidated by them. They're so cool and I'm not... Oh man, see, I feel like, and maybe this is because you're not 30 yet, Kate. Maybe this will change <laughs> with your 30th birthday. But I feel like life got so much better <laughs> as I got older. Like in my 30s, I'm like, man, life is cool. I have all this confidence. And yeah, you just kind of come into your own. And, and again, that whole like, I do what I want. I'm still waiting for that phase to hit. I mean, <laughs> I guess if I'm like, if they want to make fun of me, I'm like, you little shit, you're in school. I play video games right. for a living. <laughs> that's pretty cool <laughs> did you see fall fall guys mania and how well yeah. it did what was it called fall mania fall mania mm -hmm. yeah it exactly. was impressive yeah you could own them trisha at what point did you realize that you were a nerd did that happen at a young age not just like a drama nerd, but like a nerd nerd the kind of nerd you are today it actually took me a long time to figure it out in really it, uh i always liked the stuff that's traditionally considered nerdy but I was so overly confident as a kid, and I don't know if it was from, like, all of the underdog protagonist movies I watched as a kid or what. Um, but, like, I had no friends kindergarten through, like, third grade, but c couldn't care less. I kind of like, relate I to that, like, actually. Yeah, like, I was like, I don't, oh, no, which one is it? I didn't even see. It's on me. It's a banana. No, nope. ah! Trisha, it said no! on me. Trisha, was that you? Yeah, I oh, said it's on me. No. That's okay. That's okay. It wasn't the first round, at least. I made it past these off. I got someone here. I got a gym rat trying to grief me here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. But yeah, so I mean, I had like no friends. Like, I'd come home from school, and my parents, who were both popular in school, by the way, uh, were like, Trisha, who are your friends at school? And I was like, I don't have any. But, like, it didn't bother me. I wasn't sad that I didn't have any. It was just, like, a fact of life. I just, you know, I hung out with my imaginary friends, and at recess I played by myself. And But, like, I was so unfazed by that. Like, I didn't see that as a problem at all. So it probably took until, I don't know, third or fourth grade when kids started really picking on me. Because I think before that, they just kind of left me alone. Right. Um, once kids really started picking on me is probably when I figured it out. But before that, like, I was totally, <laughs> I just had an overactive imagination and, like, was totally fine by myself. <laughs> were you, um, were you into video games at that age? At what point did video games become uh, part of your life? I was into video games at that age, for sure, um, which was great because I didn't have any friends. And video games at that time were all s single player experiences. <laughs> this, so is very, this is all very work. relatable to me. You didn't need yeah, friends didn't for need online friends. play? Yeah, there was no friends for online play because that wasn't a thing. So I was like, oh, man, I don't have to beg my parents to play Monopoly with me. This is great. <laughs> I can just sit down with my NES and do all of this gaming by myself. Is that it's what perfect. you had? Was that your, was an NES your first uh, console? My first was a hand-me-down Com 64 because I was asking for the NES and my parents really didn't want to get it for me. Mm -hmm. And someone that my dad worked with was getting getting rid of an old Com 64. Right. And so, uh, so yeah, so my um, my dad was like, oh, I think my daughter might like that um, and brought that home for me. And then eventually I did get an NES. And then after that, my parents were like, nope, she's got a problem. Uh, and just so I wasn't allowed to get any other consoles after that. So it's after so, original, it's so funny. It, I I had a hand me how, hand me down Commodore sixty four. I just don't know who it was handed down from. I, same, I, 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 I guess I can tell this story now because my dad passed away earlier this year. Uh, but my dad was a bit shady, and um, <laughs> and I told him I really wanted a Commodore sixty four for my birthday, and I really really did. 
and he got me one for my birthday, but like it wasn't in the box or anything. He just had like all the cables were out loose and stuff. And I was like, what is this? And he said, do you want it or not? I was like, yeah, but like, where did this come from? <laughs> and he's like, don't worry about it. I was like, okay. And then you all super enjoyed your text-based adventures. <laughs> my Infocom adventures. I used to love those Infocom yeah. games. Do you remember the first game you ever beat, Trish? The first game I ever beat. Um, I wonder if it was Paperboy on the original NES. Oh man, that was brutal. That was a brutal go in every format and on the NES for sure. That game yeah, used to drive might, me nuts. That might be the first game I ever beat. It's funny because I was um, just actually streaming that the other day as a uh, viewer requested game. And I didn't, I've never really thought about it, but that probably was the first game I ever could beat. Um, but yeah, then after NES, I just transferred over to PC gaming and uh, made that my thing. Now, what was the era of PC gaming when you started playing? Were you like in the CGA, EGA, VGA era, 386, 486? I'm trying to figure out like where, where PC gaming would have been when you first started so, getting into it. I was playing a lot of three and a half floppies. Okay. Uh, I was playing Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. Okay. I was playing King's Quest. I was playing Monkey Island. Oh, yeah. Um, the Golden obviously, Age. Yeah, obviously Shit. Oregon Trail and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then, then that went to, like, the CD-ROM age of PC games. Right. Not so much of a Golden Age. Well, missed. Yeah, but that's, pr that's pretty much it, though, right? Yeah, missed and Riven and... Oh man, was that you, Kate, that just bit it? Yeah, I was trying something. Well, it was good. They haven't I found the, the exit yet, so you can find your way back. Everyone's hanging out here. Nobody wants yeah, to make a move. I, I got, I figured out a, I was taught a tactic, and I'm trying to figure it out. You had an alternate route, and it was brilliant. So one thing I learned from one of the players in Formania last night is they were already looking at the last row to see what's jiggling. That's what I started doing. Is I'm when you start, it. make it fast enough. Sorry. You start looking for all of the rows at the end. Yeah. Wait, but I thought the jiggle didn't matter. The jiggle does, does matter. matter. Jiggle is a tile that's going to collapse. Okay. Whoever's Someone been telling me. you a jiggle doesn't matter, you need to cut that person out of your life. <laughs> They're griefing I you. A, I thought a jiggle didn't matter. <laughs> it do matter. IRL. I usually qualify out of uh, tiptoe. That's weird. I'm trying to think what other games were CD-ROM games. Uh, did you guys ever play uh, like Return to Zork? Oh, yeah. No. I, mean, I, I was working on Magas. So this would have been mid-90s. Uh, yeah. It would have been like 94, 95, like around that area. I, yeah. I was working on uh, PC Gamer at that time, and we launched a sister magazine called CD-ROM Today. And so between PC Gamer and CD-ROM Today, we got a lot of these games in, and they were all terrible. Like A lot of these really bad, stuttery CD encyclopedias and ideas yeah. that weren't really ready to be real yet because the technology wasn't quite there. Right. 3DO. Remember the 3DO? What a mess. Kate, go, Kate's go, looking go. good. She's she's very much in contention here. Yeah, I agree. I'm following you, Kate. Oh, Let's do uh, it. Jim Raps. Oh, oh no! Oh, he fell, but so did you. That sucks. You're still up there. You're still up there. It's coming down. The timing's good. Nope. No. no. Oh, yes. Did you get it. You got it. Yes. Yeah. It looked hey. like you didn't, but you know what? We'll take it. First crown I of the night. I didn't think I did. First crown of the night. Let's update it. I gotta do the crown count here up to 56. Congratulations. I'll take oh, it. yes, seventh guest. How could I forget seventh guest? I almost just, <laughs> because of the two back to back tournaments, I'm like, oh, I need to pause and I need to take a screen cap of this screen <laughs> to submit for points yeah. or whatever. I'm oh, like, yeah, Wait. we had to send our screens in after every round so they could see what medals and kudos and stuff we had. Now I just Yay. get a play. This is great. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is a lot simpler. Than these high high profile high pressure big money tournaments. Yeah, it feels really nice playing when there's not like five thousand dollars on the line. <laughs> does that did, does that make you more nervous when you know there's a big cash prize? Is yeah. that like in your head? Hundred percent. The thing so, is, like starting off, I was like, oh, it's fine, and then the better I did, I was like, oh no, I'm closer. Oh no, I'm closer to it. Oh right. no, like if so I just get this one crown, I'm in the finals. If yeah. I just do this, I'm I'm qualify or whatever. So the, yeah, the stress levels just go up as you get closer to the money, basically. A hundred, yeah, hundred percent. So if you if you were in like a hexagon, and there was five grand on that on that just that one final hexagon round, like I don't know how that doesn't affect your play, or do you think yeah. you can completely just shut that out? Um. 
No, I don't know. It depends. It's tough. I don't think I could. I would buckle under the pressure. I would fold I like have, a deck chair. I have ice in my veins, is what I've been told. I mean, that's the whole clutch thing. I mean, that was legit. Pulling stuff out, you know. That's what clutch is, pulling out a result when you, you know, under under pressure when you need to do it. Yep. That's why I'm like, there's no way you should be scared of high school students, mean high school students. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you could probably beat any of these kids in, like, any video game they care to name. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, not only that, but, like, if you can be that icy cool under pressure when it's that kind of tournament and money on the line, you can handle some mean high school kids. True. That's what I'm saying. They're just all so cool. They know it, and they know everything. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm like, dude, I'm oh older oh than God. you. Oh my God, I can't get through this door. They're all better at social media than I am. Oh, that's not true. I got Black Friday at the door there and I may not qual. They're great at TikTok. Okay, well that's, they're probably better at TikTok yeah. than me, I, I can say for sure. Mm. Okay, Made I'm gonna it. make it. I'm gonna make it, but it was ugly. <laughs> it was ugly. So, Trisha, did you did you become like nerdier as you got older? Do you think? Yes. Yeah, because I think that I uh, I where I ended up finding friends was in the nerdier circles. So, um, like that's where I ended up finding acceptance and finding people that weren't your typical like high school or junior high mean girl, mean guy. Bully what are, are we people. are we talking about like chess club? What are we talking? What kind of nerdy circles are we talking about? Oh man, I mean in high school, speech and debate team, okay. uh, mathletes, Latin <laughs> honor society, national yeah. honor society. So like okay. stereotypical like nerds. Yeah, um, and then. I started dating someone, my first real boyfriend, and I started dating someone my sophomore year of high school, and uh, he was a dungeon master for his friends. And so I knew that he and his, and this was before I had even heard of D&D, I knew that he and his friends got together and played a game on the weekends, and I was all butthurt that I wasn't invited. Um, and I was like, hey, I know you play this game, can I play? And he was like, uh, do you want to? Because I think he was nervous that I would judge him and his friends if I saw how nerdy it was. Oh. Um, but that was not the case. And you're well, like, I, mean, I just want to be a part of it. Yeah, and uh, this and this yeah, and this was this was still an era where the idea of a of a girl taking an interest in video games or something nerdy like that is going to freak some people out, right? Yeah, mm. and, and he wasn't, I mean, he wasn't like, I don't want you to play. He was just like, please don't judge me because our relationship was going well. <laughs> right. And both of us were like each other's first real boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, so I said, you know, can I just come watch sometime? Am I on the right one? I hope, I think so. Yes. Oh, okay, right I just followed everybody else. So did you end up getting into D&D? Yeah, so I watched I watched them play one adventure and I was like, dude, this is awesome. Like, can <laughs> I can I make a character and play? And he was like, I mean, I guess, yeah, here's the player's handbook. Um, and I borrowed the player's handbook and I let's see, am I on the right one? No. Come on, come on, move, move, move. Oh my god, I, I got I got caught in traffic I'm there and almost didn't make it to the safety head. of my tile. I'm on everybody else's head. That was rough. Uh, yeah. Qualified. Uh, but yeah, so I watched him play once and I was like, I want to do this. And he lent me the book. And I think he was half expecting I'd be like, oh, wow, this is a really <laughs> big book for one game. But it was second edition AD&D. And uh, I, I took the player's handbook home and like killed it in a night and then took the Dungeon Master's Guide home and killed it. And uh, yeah, rolled up a character and started playing. And do you so remember the I first character you ever rolled? Uh, yes, she was a human rogue. Uh, and I forget what her name was, but she died first adventure because I was oh. like, I'm going to oh, wow. do all these amazing epic things. I'm a hero. Not realizing like, especially in second edition AD and D you have what? Six hit points. As yeah. A you're very first? squishy. Yeah. Very squishy as a first level, uh, thief, which is what I was. Yeah. And I, as much as I think my boyfriend tried to fudge the rolls to keep me alive, I was just taking too many risks <laughs> and I definitely died being stupid. Um, but you know, it's all a learning experience. But then I ended up staying with that boyfriend for five years. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So we played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and a lot of magic cards. And all, I mean, all of his friends were also my friends and that's what they all played. And you know, 
So it was, I was very much in that world. I've been going through that Dungeons and Dragons learning curve myself because I just started to learn to play. We have this this um, Dungeon uh, Dungeons and Dragons stream we do every Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. Um, yes. And um, we have an expert, like a really experienced DM, who's teaching us all out how to play. But yeah, I created okay. a character and I'm like, I'm an Omni Ultimate badass and I'm just going to go fight all these giant spiders. And she's like, uh, you're a level one. Those giant spiders are going to fuck you up. And I've been, I've been right. learning a lot of... There's been a lot of teachable moments in my... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons education the last several weeks, but it's been really fun though. I totally get why people are into it now. It's really fun. Oh, it's so much fun. And especially for me being a theater kid, I right. was like, and, and in college, I, uh, oh, I'm gonna get, oh, that was so close. I know um, his name. Oh, oh no, oh, I'm no. Are you totally okay, you dead. okay? <gasps> I'm dead. I'm out. Shit, sorry. Okay, you okay? Yep. Did you, did you have a close and shave or something? You gasped. Yep. I dove. And the only reason I made it is because I dove. Okay. Good job right. on the dive. Well, this is the this is the squeaky bum time for me. I always get jammed up on these planks. So let's see how we do. There's so many people here still. There's, there's too many people. That's the problem. So oh, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. No, really? Scary. Wait, no. No. <gasps> oh my god, I made it. I made it. I'm in. <laughs> Holy shit! I got dragged at the end and I, I made it. I should not have just made that. Same. We should uh, not be Gary, here. We should not be here. Oh my god. I'm I'm the uh, constellation skin, the black and white with the gold eggshell on her head. And Gary is the little astronaut. She's 8136, I'm 1478. Oh, yes. But I want to know who your D&D &D character oh. is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I had a, um, well, I have, still have. He's somehow still alive. Uh, an aquatic half-elf uh, fallen paladin uh, named Ooh. Marengi, uh, who has a very dark past because his whole family was murdered by uh, marauding <laughs> orcs. And so he's oh, a bit wow. uh, curmudgeonly and a bit moody. He's a bit emo, frankly. He's a bit of an emo paladin. Um, and he's kind of renounced the, the fish gods uh, that he once worshipped and served as a paladin. Um, no. Remember the opening scene of like Bram Stoker's Dracula when Gary Oldman comes back from the wars and he's like, is this, is this God's reward? You know, because his wife's thrown herself in the, in the river. Yeah. And he says, I renounce God. And he, he gets really pissed off. Um, that's, that's, my, that's basically my character's backstory. But nice. deep down, he still he still wants to believe. Like he, I think there's a good guy still. You know, the Anakin Skywalker is still in there somewhere, basically. Oh my god! Oh, what no. is going on? Like, did they just score three, four in a row in like five seconds? What hey, is going know. on, Kate? I just tied it up. I, I don't know. I'm trying to score goals here. How did they score four goals? I've just never seen that. No one was on her goal. Four goals I'm, in five seconds. I'm sorry that you guys are team yellow. Six four. Yeah, this is sucking. How is it like we have six? I mean, I mean, I just, I've never seen, I've never gotten, I've never scored four, never been, had been scored on four times in five seconds before. It's because it feels like a violation. They have four, four go, balls. Go, go. We got it. Go. Well, I mean, that that definitely is con comprising uh, part of the problem. You still have fifty-one seconds. Anything could happen. There's a long time in this game. That is There's another one. I feel, I feel like Blue's given up though. Oh my! No, this is a high score game with four They're balls. Only... There are only two. I mean, yeah, a lot can happen, especially with four balls, as we've as we've just seen. Yeah. Is there's that you one. just hitting that one in there? Oh. No. Oh, okay, there's shit. another eggshell guy then. This oh, there's nuts. another guy. Oh, I almost got a goal. It almost went in. Go, 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 Now go, we go, got go, it. Go, now go. we got it. 11 7. 11 8. Kate, do you my play D&D &D at all? I don't. I played D&D &D one time on a stream for people who play D&D. &D, uh, and it had like 5,000 people watching and it was my first ever D&D &D experience. And it was terrifying. Yeah, that could be a little terrifying. And also, play, in my experience, playing D&D &D as entertainment for a stream is very different than playing D&D &D by yourself with your friends. <laughs> yeah, and there was like... Everyone involved, while they were in lovely, lovely people, they were also very experienced players. And the DM was like one of the most sought after DMs at the time. So like mm -hmm. he was very good and everyone involved was very good. And I was this person who was like, I've never played this ever. And they're like, just ask questions. I'm like, well, I don't want to ask a question every two minutes on this massive live stream, you know? So yeah. it was it was fun and they were all super nice, but at the same time I was just like, uh, I've been a little embarrassed, let's say. 
Yeah, no, I totally get that. I mean, I even get, I, I've been playing D&D, gosh, for years, and I still get nervous on D&D streams, because when you're streaming, it's so much more about the improv and the performance. <gasps> Fuck! You okay? You got it. Oh, I just had this beautiful section carved out up top, and then I just lost you're my doing footing. Great. Look at that yeah. hopping. So much hopping. My I kid almost my got footing, a crown though. on this today. It broke my heart. She lost oh. it by seconds. I'm still waiting for she's she's come so close to her final crown so many times now. I really I wanted to get it so badly because I know she'll be so thrilled. Like, and how old is she again, Gary? She's uh, oh shit. She's um eight. Okay. No, 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 no. Um, this is uh, this is one of Kate's strongest final round games. She usually does well on hexagon. Gary, are you all about the hopping strategy as well? I, I mean, in my head, I know that's what I'm supposed to be doing, but then you know, in the moment, I, I panic under pressure in this game a lot. Um, it's this. So like, I have what 28 crowns. I only, I have multiple crowns in every other game. Hexagon, I only have one. Got it. Because this game is just, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, you know, like not every game type is suited for every person. This is like the, this is like the one that I'm just, my brain's not wired to be good at it. Got it. I find this one very stressful. As it well. Oh my God. It's so stressful. It drives me nuts. How did you do that? And just land oh, I'm out. On that? Oh, nope. I'm out. Yeah, you're, you're still going. You're still going. Gary, are you still in? Yeah. It's just you and me. Is it you and me? Oh, well, you're winning. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. You're gonna win. You're gonna win. I don't even know where you are. You got, you I'm got above you. Oh yeah, I mean, you're, yeah, you're gonna win. You're like probably six levels above me. No, I'm just above you by one. You've got way more tiles down there than I do. I'm using them all up too. So funny. Well, team crown, Gary. Well, team right? crown either way, right? Yeah, team team yeah. Tw guys crown. I'll take it. By the time you get down here, there might not be much left. They said uh, that you can go to five minutes on this. God, that sounds like agony. You're doing great. Both of you are. I'm watching the pro strat. <laughs> There's no pro strats. If you're watching pro strats, you're watching Kate. You ain't watching me. <laughs> I'm flipping back and forth between the two of you. And you're both doing way no. better than I would do. There you go. Kate just had to wait me out. It's really all she needed to do. Just wait for me. She's like, wait for Gary I, to I fuck was, up. It's it's gonna I, come. Just wait. I was pulling some pretty sick moves. I'll be perfectly honest. I went real quiet and found my zen. Where were like how many levels up were you still? I was just I was above you. Okay. Just by one, but I I uh, turned it around and found a bunch of real estate up top, which was helpful. Yeah, that was that was really only gonna end one way. Let me update, Kate, that's um, your second crown of the night already. Should we rack them up? Yes. Where's, uh, wow, we. My crown. Uh, I gotta find the crown counter here. Hold on for Kate. Where is it? Where'd it go? Great job, Kate. Thank you, Trisha. There it is. Fifty-seven. I appreciate that. I hope that I like get your your pro tips by osmosis through the camera. Oh, you'll want. You'll, I mean, you'll learn a lot. That's what I did with Dr. Lupo when we interviewed him. Nice. What, you taught Dr. Lupe how to play Fall Guys? No, I learned through oh, Osmosis right. while playing with him. Connection error. Go again. Oh, really? I'm in twirly gig. Uh, I got I got booted. Okay, let me... Okay, yeah, let me... And then, oh, and then Kate, you also, you know, you paid that forward by uh, teaching Mark Hoppus from Blink-182 how to get past a particularly tricky uh, obstacle on Whirly gig. I did. Uh, I love Mark. When you had Mark on the show, were you like, we saw you at TwitchCon? We did indeed. We did exactly actually. That. Yeah, we did. He was like, oh yeah, I remember right. that was a cool night. Because I we remember him giving a, a the... shout out to Untitled Goose Game. That's how I knew he was legit. Yes. Trisha, did you come back to the lobby? No, how do we get back into it? You have to quit out of the show. X and leave show? X and or, leave. Or, no, no, start, sorry, whichever. Oh, Menu. got it. Awesome. I didn't know you could do it mid mid game. Yeah, you have to wait until the game has started, which is really annoying. Someone in the my chat just said, after Rivals Pooh Bear said mixing Gary's racing skills and Kate's timing skills would make the ultimate Fall Guys player. Maybe someone should yeah, Island of Dr. Moroas together. It was quite funny uh, watching them spectate you on Hexagon because both of them were like, Gary only has fifth gear. Yeah, I uh, another connection error. Yeah, I I like I, 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 I I've said it many times before. I don't 
Um, I'm not good at hexagon. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how many different ways I can say it. I'm not good at it, and probably never will be. I don't know how many rounds of it I've played. If I was going to get good at it, you'd, you'd have seen it by now. Maybe exactly. you just need to find yours then. I don't know if I'm going to go back to the menu because I don't think. Really? I'm having all kinds of problems here. Yeah. Do you want to reboot your game? Yeah, I'm going to have to. Sorry, I got a little issue here. Give me one second, please. That's okay. Actually, you know what? I'm back in the menu. Let's try this one more time. Ready up okay. one more time. And if this doesn't work again, I'm going to reboot. It could also be because I'm hosting and I'm in Canada. I can oh, try really? hosting on the next one. Yeah, let's. Let me. Um. This is not working for me. Let me do a reboot. Okay. Okay. Let me take a second. Do it. Do your thing. Do it. Do it. No, do it now. So, Kate, oh what time are you streaming tomorrow? Noon Pacific. Okay. Yeah. Super fun. And I'll be live uh, as long as I want to. <laughs> How are you feeling about turning 30? Does that, does, does that, does the, the dial clicking over, is, is that a big deal for you or is it just another year? I think it's, it's, I think it's more that people have built it up to be more than it actually is. Where it's like, I think the twenties are for making mistakes. The thirties are for kind of figuring yourself out a bit. And then, you know, your forties are for hopefully having things figured out, but probably not. But everyone's like, oh, big 30, 30, 30. And I'm like, yeah, but it's just like, it's the difference is a day. All right, so I'm rebooted. Let me uh, invite you both. I'll host and see if that helps us at all. Okay, yeah. I, um, I am now pigeon with a tutu. Okay. <laughs> all right, invites are out. Okay, I have changed it up. It's okay, does that mean you're done making mistakes? Because that would definitely be a bonus. No, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's for... Uh, 20s are for making the bad mistakes. Let me tell you something. I'm 48 and I am not anywhere near done making mistakes. Not even close. I definitely made worse mistakes in my 20s than in my 30s. Oh, yeah. Not I mean, that that's I'm, definitely when you make the most, the mistake best mistakes. Free. Yeah, not that I'm mistake free, but the 30s in general have been way better for me than my <laughs> 20s. Like, so much better. Did you have like a wild 20s? I did. Did you really? Well, now you have to yeah, tell us. Now you was, have to tell us stories. Yeah, I was the nerdy kid that didn't do anything and like didn't drink in college and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so when I did get out on my own and was legal twenty one, I was like, "Oh man, this is great! I'm an adult now. I do what I want." I get um, that. Yeah, I was a bartender I, in my twenties, so. <laughs> yep. Yep. I it worked wasn't... as a cocktail waitress a lot, and almost every job I cocktail waitress at. We all drank on the job. Was that your experience with bartending too? Yeah, because I worked in a like a traveler's hotel. So a lot of people coming in from out of town and all they wanted to do was party. It wasn't like a business hotel where people were there doing work or anything. And it wasn't, it was just people who were like, I'm on vacation for the next year. Oh, I want to buy myself a drink and I want to buy you a drink. And I was just okay. like, I was the manager. So I was like, okay, yeah, that sounds great to me. Do you have any fond memories of your time as a bartender, Kate? Or did you kind of hate the whole thing? I met two of, like, I met two people who I am still in contact with to this day. Okay. One's in Portland, one's in Australia. And, like, we we formed a lifelong friendship there. So you but, got like, that out uh, of it. Yeah, I have these two people who I am very fond of. Dude. Um, The other, like, I met a lot of cool people. We oh. had a lot of cool parties. I figured out how to drink a lot <laughs> and uh yeah okay maybe. i just got, i just got yeeted all the way back to the beginning of the level oh wow oh, how'd dear. that happen i'm so pissed i'm so pissed right now okay so i swear to god it's like someone kept knocking me over on purpose so that i couldn't get back up i don't know maybe i'm just real dirt at this game but ooh, that was rough i'm there's no way no I just way. pulled I hate a it when really... I struggle on these easy first levels. It should not happen. Like I just right pulled now. a Pooh Bear strat that I saw, and I feel uh, really good about myself. I definitely learned some strats watching. Uh, I don't know if I can execute them, but I was like, "Oh, that's a thing you can do. That's cool." From watching those guys. Yeah, I just I just did one, and I was like, "Nice. I feel good about that." From watching who? Uh, Grand Pooh Bear, who was the host of the tournament yesterday He's and the, the winner of the tournament the, today. The two time. Right. Champion of Fall Mania. He's a legit, very good player. Yeah. And actually, Mitch, who was also a part of that team, is in chat right now. Oh, cool. Yay! Mm -hmm. Oh, no! 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 
Kate, oh, was, that, was, was, that, was that your first time hearing what Snowbike Mike can do outside of uh, being the animal talking hype man? Because he's really an no. incredible shoutcaster. No, no, I've seen I've seen him before and I've like listened to your thing and I watched his stream and stuff. He's so Are good at dropping? his job. I, I'm not joking when I yeah, say it's only- Yeah, we have a, to drop. Oh, we do? Okay. okay. I'm not joking when I say it's only a matter of time before he gets picked up by like ESPN Esports or something. Because he's made 100%. for that. 100%. Absolutely. He's so good at it. He brings so much energy and hype. We did the Xbox uh, podcast with him today. He's so much fun. Nice. Yeah, but, good but shout the, catchers are so amazing. Yeah, he's incredible. The funny thing is, like the nicest, the nicest guy you'll ever meet is Mike. In Fall Guys, he is a hundred percent toxic. He is like Why the worst kind is? of griefer. Why I do you think that is, Gary? I feel like this game brings out. Brings it's like a mirror that holds up the like you when you look in the mirror you see the worst version of yourself mm. that's that's my philosophy got it you know it's like people people change under this you know it's like the whole road rage thing you know you get behind the wheel of a car i'm much i'm much more shouty and combative um not my usual placid accommodating self yeah I'm, of course <laughs> <laughs> when i'm behind the wheel of a car and the first few weeks of playing Fall Guys, I raged a lot. And then eventually I just became a bit more zen about the whole thing. Well. Do you get ragey playing video, playing games, Trisha? Do you rage quit? Do you want to throw the controller? I try not to rage quit. I do get close and I do get ragey playing games. I have toned that down immensely since my, oh gosh darn it. Since my tiny <laughs> human uh, will repeat what I say. Right. Right. So that has definitely changed. Oh my God, my kid hears it all. She's constantly telling me not to use the bad words. Oh, <laughs> she, she's so sweet. Like she would never say those words. Oh, yeah. She knows they're bad and she berates me constantly for using them too much, especially when I play Fall Guys. Yeah, so, I um, my worst is platformers. Oh like, yeah. Uh, like Celeste or um, Ori on the really tricky parts and stuff like that, like especially the speed run right. bosses and stuff like that. That's that's when you'll hear a curse word slip out of me usually. But I used to swear like a sailor when I played those type of games. Uh huh. And then oh, I, fuck. yep, like that. And then I got a tiny dude and I was like, oh, I can't do that anymore. How old is tiny dude? Three and a half. Is I, I so I don't know how kids work. Um, is that old <laughs> enough to play a video game? Uh, for some kids, probably he's not quite there yet. Are uh, you excited to get to that stage? Heck yeah! He did ask me one day. He randomly was like, "Mommy, can we play video games?" And I was like, "Oh, my dreams are coming true!" Um, and I gave him a Mario Kart wheel with a Joy-Con in it and set it to steer assist and auto accelerate so he really didn't have to do anything besides hold the wheel. Um, and uh, now he, what we've learned is he just likes to watch us play games, which is also okay. Um, but he's really happy for any screen time he can get. Oh. So he doesn't really play, like he just kind of holds the wheel like off to the side. And we're like, buddy, buddy, turn your wheel. Buddy, you have a bullet bill. Hit the button, hit the button. And he's just like chilling. I remember when uh, when our daughter was really, really little, she would watch uh, Leah and I play Mario Kart on the Wii. Um, and she wanted to play too, but again, she was too young. So we gave her the, you know, the Wii racing wheel that you could get, that you could plug the, yeah. the, the Wiimote into, but it was just the yeah. empty plastic wheel. But she didn't know the difference. Like she was turning the wheel and like she was pretending to play the game and having a great time. That's it's very awesome. sweet. Yeah, we just recently tried to get him to play Mario Party with us. Oh my god. Oh my, god my kid loves Mario Party. That seems Party. a bit advanced. Well, but kids can get the you do this to, you know, roll it. And honestly, right. it's uh, never too early to teach children about the inherent injustices in life <laughs> as Mario okay, Party fair. will will do so so it efficiently. Will. It will. Oh my god, that game. Now, you want to talk about a game that makes you rage? That that's Mario when my Party. daughter first started saying, "Daddy, I was like, oh shit! He was like, I'm like, what the fuck is this? They're giving you, they're giving you stars because you were born on a Tuesday or some random bullshit. I was good at the mini games. How am I behind? I, I get really, really ragey. I'm Do you kid. have any games that you're particularly excited to share with your tiny human? Uh, I mean, honestly, whatever is popular for tiny humans at that time. I don't want to like. I'm not one of those people that's like, I started with NES, so you have to start with NES, you know what I mean? Right. Like, 
whatever kids are digging at the time, if it's a cool game, I'm all about it. Uh, Goose Game, I think, would be a really fun one if he was up for it now. Oh, you know, the two-player mm -hmm. update just came out. My kid's really excited about that. You can be two, yes. two geese. Nasty. That's great. Nasty yeah, I have strong, what you just said, Ditch, I have strong feelings oh, about I that. I really think it's a mistake, and I don't like it when parents try to um, force their kids to like things that they like. It's like, you know, I liked this when I was a kid, so you must like it as well. I think feel like that's likely to backfire. Like, the more you try and push something on a kid, the more like, fuck you, I'll make my own decisions about what I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of feel like that too, which is funny because I recently got criticized for uh, being that type of parent. On oh, Twitter. really? Yeah, well, because I tweeted out about the God of War book, oh, which by right. the way, is not for kids. It is not for kids. It is for adults and it's hilarious. Um, but I was like, oh my gosh, this is so funny. Any parents that are God of War fans, check this out. And someone was like, stop forcing what you like on your children. Um, but Something I I've learned about the internet. Is that people suck. Yeah, a lot of people suck. <laughs> uh, a lot of people also that have a lot to say about how you should or should not parent a lot of times don't have kids. Mm -hmm. Which is not to say they're not allowed to have opinions because they absolutely are. But also, your opinion, you have to acknowledge not be as educated as someone who's been down that road before in that particular thing. Not yeah, as educated is, in general. This is a very grabby um, perfect match, just so you're aware. There's lots of grabbing going on. Oh, that's I'm the thing. I got eliminated Trish... at that level. Oh. Trisha is like, I don't have kids. And so I've just assumed that, like, no, I don't have the knowledge to speak to that. And even if I did, why would I? It's not my kid. Well, yeah, I mean, but I, I think everybody's opinion is valid, you know? So you could get in there and say, oh, you know, like, I, I don't know that I would do that. But honestly, no one really knows what you would or wouldn't do until you're in that situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I have an eight-year-old. Yeah. I, I don't know how kids work either. Yeah, I know less than Kate does. They I know. I feel like I know less every day. That's the reality is that no one really knows. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a funny thing. But on in me. general, I agree with you, Gary. I don't think you should try to push what you like on your kid because I know that like, it's like, I know Logan's going to grow up to be like, d and for nerds because me and my husband both play D&D. There you go. You know, whatever your parents like is not cool. I think my kid, I mean, my kid's definitely a nerd and she's super duper, super duper into video games, uh, which, you know, makes me very proud. But that's not because we said you must like video games. It's just that we, both of her parents are super nerdy and play bunches of video games. You grow up in that environment, it's just naturally going to, you know, it follows that you'll probably take an interest as well. Plus, video games are awesome. Mm -hmm. Right. Agreed. Rock and Bro. roll. Are we all still yeah. in or did we lose anyone? No, Trisha. Okay. Boss. All right. Yeah, she got eliminated last round. On the fruit part. I hate. Oh, this is one of the know. variants. Oh yeah, with the columns. Oh. Mm -hmm. I st I've stopped calling them dildos. I hope you appreciate that. It's columns <laughs> I mean, now. I didn't mind that. Actually, I know yeah. you don't mind because you're you're the first person to kind of snarf at a. A lewd like, comment? Yeah, very. Like it's like sometimes I'm like, why? What was that funny? And I have to actually do some thinking. But like you got there right away. Yeah, of course. Oh, this is bad for us. <laughs> this is Dude, not great. Some of, some of these are different. We're actually yeah. No, it's all, it's, they it's just dead introduced level the, the variations. Moment. Yeah, the columns are new. Oh come on, come on, blue, useless blue. Oh, we're a little bit behind here. We got to move. Oh, we're ahead of red though. I really. It's did very close. It. It's gonna come down to who griefs each other's balls go, go, go. the most successfully. No, but now we have the dildos. So. Oh yeah, and the, plus the dildos. Oh, and we have to grief red. Yeah. And our ball, oh my god. Okay, that's no, okay. Yeah. Our blue ball is moving in the right direction. Good. Come on. I'm come holding on. up yellow. Go, go, we got go, it. We got go. it. We got it on that final incline. We should be fine. Roll over that yellow. Push, push, push. They just got just very got to watch stuck. these dildos at the end here. I don't okay, I'm get trying to hold yellow. Oh no, oh no, oh no. No, we got it. We got it. We got okay, it. Okay, we're good. We we're good. It. We're good. Oh my goodness. Good job, guys. <sighs> Spooky. Someone in uh, your chat earlier, um, Trisha, because I'm watching it in the squad stream here, said that one of the things you like to do is play really sad video games and cry. Is that is that a thing that you do? Is that is that true? <laughs> um, I I do really like like emotionally impactful indie games. Okay. So Jen, <laughs> I see my chat right now. But do, like, do, yes, do they really get to you emotionally when you play these games? Oh my gosh, sometimes. Yeah, especially, I mean, especially since becoming a parent, everything makes me cry since becoming a parent. What are some recent games oh. that, have, that have had that impact on you? Tell Me Why. I just finished Tell Me Why. Oh, we just started that. 
Yeah, uh, tell me why it hit me. Okay. Uh, oh, thank I won't, you. I won't tell you why. Is Kate luck, the only Gary. one still in it? No, no, Gary's in this too. Both of us. Okay, you guys got it. Team Crown. Team Crown, let's Look at go. this, we're up front, look at this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go right. Go, guys, go. Go get it. But yeah, tell me why, very recently, got me good. Uh, and I just started Spirit Fairer. Oh, my Which wife's is, really into Spirit Fair, big time. Shit, pineapple. Yeah, everybody's like, dude, you are gonna cry. So yeah, she see. she keeps telling me like she's not like the people that she has to when they're ready to leave. She's not ready for them to go. Is this does that make sense to you when when I say yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, Gary, this is not good. I, I haven't. It's not I'm good for me. Of, I haven't had to say goodbye to anybody yet. Yeah, someone's gonna get this before me. Oh, so many people, <laughs> so many people just close. jumped at it. Look how I close. I, I, I pretty yeah. much had my hand on it. Ah, that pineapple. I mean, we found out last night that the double crown is possible. I is know. It? I got a double but, crown with my it like, teammate. It, it's got to be like down to the millisecond, right? There's no nothing to separate them. I've never seen that. Yeah. Uh, they were saying um, today that at one point they got a triple crown. Three, five three members clover. of the same team got on Fall Mountain a triple crown. Wow, crown. that's awesome. Nuts. Are you like that generally though, Trisha? Do you get weepy at movies and things like that? Like sad movies? I never used to until I had a kid. Oh. And now I'm like, now I'm only like that with movies where, where if, if it's a movie where anything happens to a kid. That's oh, like yeah. my trigger. I, ca I can't even watch them anymore. Yeah, that's my trigger. So like I will ask sometimes, like especially if it's like a horror series or something that's out on TV. I will ask friends that have seen it, does bad stuff happen to kids? And if they say yes, yeah. I'm like, cool, I don't really watch that. It's true. It's, I'm it's, the same it's... way with not so much kids, but animals. I wrote, yeah. a, um, I wrote a movie years ago. It was actually the first script I ever sold in this business that kind of got my foot in the door. And it's about a detective who's looking for his missing uh, daughter. And I wrote that long before my daughter was born. Uh, now, of course, she's eight years old, which is like the age of the kid in the, in the movie. And they're actually pretty, finally pretty, because of how long it takes in Hollywood, they're actually pretty close to making it. But like, I don't oh, know goodness. if they do, I don't even know if I'll even be able to watch it. Yeah. Because it was written yeah, by a different tough. version of me, you know what I mean? No, I just can't get through this damn door. This is, this is killing me right here. Come on, I need oh this to drop, I need this to drop. Got it. Get over, get over, get over, get over. I'm not gonna make it. Oh my God, I was the last one over. 41 out of 41. Was that first round? That the is second round. round, isn't it? Okay, that back to lobby. was first round. Yeah, back to lobby. All right. Mhm. Mm I'm still satisfied by that 41 out of 41. But yeah, that's that's my thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, Someone in my chat says I remember that pause in The Last of Us 2. There was like a part in The Last of Us 2 where I had to pause and ask chat who's already played the game. I was like, legit question. Hmm. Is what I'm scared of what's going to happen? Is that what's going to happen next? Because if it is, I cannot. Yeah, I can't do game. it. I remember watching, uh, you know, the Liam Neeson movie Taken when that first came out. Yeah. That was before mm -hmm. my yes. daughter was born. There's a scene, and because he's looking for his missing daughter, there's a scene in that movie where, like, in order to get information as to where his daughter is, like, he takes this guy's wife and like fucking shoots her in the knee, and she's down oh on God. the floor, and he's like, "You better tell me like where my daughter is, or I'm gonna fucking shoot your wife in the other knee." And I remember thinking, wow, steady on, Liam. You, you might have gone too far at this point. And then I watched it again, like, after my daughter was born. And I was like, yeah. totally reasonable. Should have done that five minutes ago. <laughs> Level-headed like, Yeah, level -headed like, your response. attitude changes completely. So can I blow your mind a little bit? Of course. I have here. decided since watching Finding Nemo after becoming a parent. Oh, my God. Finding Nemo is just taken with fish. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's that's... Just fish. So there is a, a total family massacre at the beginning of the movie where this family buys this new house about to have kids everybody in the family gets murdered in the middle of the night except for the dad and one of the unborn children who then raises that one kid and that's all he's got and then that kid gets kidnapped taken to the other side of the world feasibly and the dad has to traverse the entire ocean oh my god that's messed taken. up like, but, it, but it's not like... like Nemo ends up in like a Middle Eastern uh, sex ring or something like that. Like in just you... in a dentist's well, office. Well, I mean that, that would have been an interesting Fish version tank. of that movie. Darla. Yeah, I mean Darla's gonna shake him to death. It's a matter of time before Darla shakes him to death. Yeah, Dad's got to get there in time. It's oh, terrible. that's interesting. It's and and poor Dad's got to go through like the sharks and the jellies and like all these people trying to kill him. A whole ocean full of stuff trying to kill him, and he's just trying to save his kid. It's taken with fish. 
Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm hearing the you. The funniest thing is like, I've obviously seen Finding Nemo way before I had a kid. <laughs> and never felt that way. And then watched it after And watching it again. It was just, this is a horror movie. I am now watching a horror film. I, I guess somebody in my chat is saying Taken is Finding Nemo with people because Nemo came out first. <laughs> that, that's an even better take. You just blew my yeah. fucking mind with that one. <laughs> like that one. <laughs> so that's, very, that's very cool. I like that a lot. Okay, you're not like that, are you? Do you get affected by like sad movies and sad games? Uh, no. Well, like TV shows. Okay, not at the plot, but I cry at the series finale of any TV show. Oh, really? And it's it's not because the show is ending. It's because I can see the real emotion in the actor's eyes. Right. And you know how they're they're always crying because the end of a TV show, end of a TV series always has some sort of like, this person's moving or this person's, right. you know, getting married or whatever. And there's always like a big emotional thing that happens. I can see the actors processing that emotion and trying to mask it as their character. But I'm like... Oh, this is really sad. And I cry at that. Okay, so you're crying like, at the reality of it rather than the, the drama yeah, of it. Yeah, okay. I'm a huge empath. So like I feel emotion for other people a lot. And so if I can see that the actors are like processing it on the show, I'm like, ooh, yikes. But like a movie has never me. got you, never got you like right in the feels? Not really. Huh. Like maybe. I, I cried at Grey's Anatomy once when someone died. Okay, I mean that's legitimate. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's it's mostly because that like I know that the cast of the TV show has been together for like thirteen seasons, and that was their every day. And like, okay, all right, the but crew there has to is be all going to be sad. There has to yeah, be that's that real like the world emotional, context. right? Okay, yeah, that emotional connection. Okay, so fictional sadness cannot affect you, no. basically. Ah, fuck that. <laughs> Give me the I, real stuff. I cry. I, I cry at movies. I choke up easily, really easily at movies all the time. Really? I only do if it's kid stuff. I'm pretty good other than that. No, I'm, I think I'm pretty good. Oh, dear. Yeah, I mean, and some, some of those kids movies are a kryptonite for that sort of stuff. Oh, man. I had, so it was right after my little dude was born <sighs> that I saw Finding Dory for the first time. Uh-huh. And like just even the beginning of that movie, spoiler alert for people that haven't seen Finding Dory, but <laughs> uh, the beginning of that movie- I like how you spoiler alerted that, but not The Last of Us 2. I didn't say anything about Can The Last really of Us Can you really spoiler two. alert something at the beginning of a movie? I don't know. I don't I was know, I just careful. thought that was a really funny juxtaposition. I was very careful to not say what made me scared about Last of Us Well, two. you implied very heavily. <laughs> But anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, I was trying to be very vague about it. It's fine, it's fine. But in, oh, I'm going to follow the damn slime. I hate slime. Uh, with Finding Dory, the opening no! is like, no, I haven't, Kate. Parents? I got eliminated. Oh, no, I, I'm the last oh. one here. Jesus. I don't want I'm this responsibility. She's still in. I'm still oh, in. She, oh, sorry. I thought, I thought I heard Trisha go. No, uh, no I had a, I'm going to go here. This is the part no! I can never I'm done. Do I'm, I'm done. Trisha, you're doing great. Just focus no! on this. It's fine, Trisha. Here she part. is. I don't know how to do this run hey, and take, not take die. Take your time. Trisha, time you, now, you now hold all of our fates in your hand. So just you got to pause? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That might be a little, a little, a little late. Oh, just close. Nope. Too late. No! Oh, no, there you go. Oh there goodness. you go. My goodness. Look at you. I hate fly okay, now this. Okay, now, now the columns. I hate it. I hate it. You're, oh, you're doing it, though. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. Trisha, look at you go. You do it. No, no. Quick, get off me. <laughs> you did it. You did it. Look at that. You're the only one who made it through. Oh, my goodness. It's That's terrifying. amazing. Yeah. You're the chosen oh. bean. Well chosen done. Bean for the next two seconds. Uh, okay, so yeah. finding Dory. Finding Dory opens with the parents trying to, and they're, they're being wonderful fish parents, to uh, find alternate ways to do things with a child that has short-term memory loss. And despite their best efforts, in the beginning, Dory gets lost and can't find her way home anyway. Even no. though they have all these precautionary things in place 
to help her with her short-term memory loss. It is the most tragic, horrific, like, honestly, my little dude was so little, he was in like one of those baby swings. And my husband and I just both were sobbing yeah. at the opening five minutes of Finding Dory. And then we started laughing because we were like, oh my gosh, we've turned into like total wusses. What happened? This is hilarious that we're crying at Finding Dory. Oh. oh. Fruit shoot, so bad. No, you're doing good. You just need to hug the right uh, side a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, definitely, definitely stay on the right or left sides here. You'll, they'll give you a little bit of protection. Uh, Nana. I don't think you're gonna make it. No. No, this is very bad. But you were the I, high. You were the MVP that round, higher than me and Kate. We're supposed to be pros. A little I bit of progress. A little do bit. Do recall one movie that I have cried at, hmm. and it is the first five minutes of Up. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, rem I remember seeing it in the theater and be actually for once being really glad that we were watching it in 3D because the 3D glasses made it impossible for you to see that I was crying. Oh, yeah. Up is really sad. Also, I've heard, and Gary, you can probably attest to this one, but I've heard that Inside Out as a parent is rough. I only ever saw it before I was a parent. So. Um... I mean, it's definitely one that I relate to because, you know, that that kid's not much older than my daughter. Um, but I, I, Inside Out's one of the movies that I have, like, the most admiration for as a writer, what that movie did, not just kind of conceptualizing and visualizing um, the mind of a child. But, the you know, the whole, again, spoilers, I guess, if you haven't seen Inside Out, but it's been out for a while. This whole idea that by the end of the movie... Her, as she grows up and becomes more emotionally mature, her emotions become more complex. Like, it's okay to be happy mm -hmm. and sad at the same time. Like, that's an emotion you can have. Um, I, I just thought that was a really beautiful way to, to um, help children understand their emotions, in, in a way, if that makes sense. So that was just a really, a really great movie. Yeah, I agree. No, it is a totally great movie. I've just heard from other parents that it's it, it, it'll get you once you've had kids. So I'm a little scared to watch it now. And, and Coco I'm, murdered me at the end as well. Oh, I'm, Coco. I'm losing my mind right now. Why? Someone in my chat just <laughs> rip bing bong with the praying hands emoji. What? Rip bing bong. R.I.P. Okay. Bing Bong. Like, R.I.P. Bing Bong with the praying hands bong, emoji. When Bing Bong and I just, dies, that is, that's also very sad. I but. just think that's the funniest thing I've ever read in a Twitch chat in my life. Yeah, uh, Coco. Rip <laughs> Bing Bong. <laughs> Coco will get you, though. Kate, did you try it, Coco? <laughs> no. What? I don't think I've seen Excuse Coco. Me. Oh, okay. I'm cracking up over something I saw in my chat. You're making me think about funny things in chat when we were doing the Penny Arcade golf game. The other day, you know, we, you know, we, Will and I call our streams tight conservative ball play because you know he has tight yes, conservative squad play, and, and then it became ball play, and that's funny because it kind of sounds like you're playing with testicles, and everyone's laughing. No, we so, get the joke. Yep. I'm just, you know, I'm just putting it out there, just you know, for anyone who might be uh, <laughs> slow. They're not. The there's, there's no one. Well, no, you're not. But for other people, so you're, you're, you're the first one there every time. Um, anyway, someone in the chat, I don't no. know, like, like it wasn't even that funny, I guess. Oh my god, just John McClain over the top there. Um, oh my god, I can't believe I got Because people were complaining so about it. Tight conservative ball players, the uh, and yeah, holes of glory as well. People had some issues with that. Um, but uh, the person in the chat said, to be fair, loose liberal ball play does sound a lot worse. Um, <laughs> I, I it was a, it's just one of those comments that tickled tickled me. It's in the R.I.P. Bing Bong Pray Hands Club. Mm -hmm. That's really funny. Yeah, Bing, that's, that's that really was sad. Funny. Did you see Coco, so Trisha? Oh my gosh, yes. At the end, you, so you know what I'm talking about at the end. Oh, well, I don't need yes. to say it. Oh, yes. Oh my totally god, it murdered me. Apparently, uh, somebody in my chat said there's actually a clip of me on Twitch crying. So I guess I play. Well, there must be if it happens on the regular. <laughs> if it's happening on the reg, Trish, there's got to be clips. I didn't, I wasn't aware. You know, you learn stuff about yourself on Talk Guys. And today I learned that I apparently like to stream games that make me cry. Trish, on the, the emotional, go, go ahead. No, you okay. go. You go, Kate. On on the emotional kind of subject of this, and talking about kids, do you think that kid Trisha would, if if met with adult Trisha today, would be excited uh, and proud of you? 
of herself, I, think, I guess. I think that Kid Trisha would think Adult Trisha was the biggest baby for the crying at movie stuff, for sure. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I more meant, like, all of your <laughs> achievements and your awards and your cool nerd stuff and your production company, which I want to hear about in a little bit. But, like, everything that you've accomplished, do you think that Kid Trisha would be proud? I think that if Kid Trisha had any idea that she would get paid to play video games someday. That like, if, if she found that out, she'd be like, you are the coolest person ever. Um, so I, that would win me mad points for sure. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking the same thing. Especially, yeah, that... like, with all of these remakes coming out, like, Final yeah. Fantasy VII Remake, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, these are games I played when I was, like, seven and nine years old, and getting, like, early access to Final Fantasy VII and playing Tony Hawk and, like... Yeah. Yeah. Being able to play all this stuff and getting paid for it is just kind of like, holy shit, I'm living my seven and nine year old dreams as a 30 year old woman. This is very cool. Mm hmm. It is very cool. But yeah, I mean, in all the ways I've slowly become my mother, I don't think Kid Trisha would think that was cool. <laughs> I think it's this one. Oh shit, I don't know. I don't no! know either. I just went with everybody. I else. got lost. I didn't know. Oh no. I didn't know. I was completely Qualified. lost in the woods. What happens is I can I can memorize up to five, but on that final round, the one that pops is always the one that I didn't get. And then I got to follow the crowd. Who's still in? Kate, I'm guessing. I'm still in. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the sad sack here. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Trisha, what are some of the biggest achievements, let's say, um, like gaming and nerd achievements that you have uh, that you would brag to your young self about? Uh, that I got to be in like a couple different celebrity D&D &D charity stream things where I was like, what? Me? Uh, so that was super cool. Um, Who were those when, with? Uh, Pat Kilbane, some of the Critical Role people. Um, just really, really fun stuff. Um, when I won... Oh, yeah. A streamy award with SourceFed. We won two while I was with them. Right. Um, but when we won the first one, we got to go up on stage with Vanilla Ice, who was the performer what? that year. Because uh, we won Audience Choice Series of the Year, which is the last award announced. And Ooh. and after the show is over, they had Vanilla Ice was like their big headlining musical performance for the show. Oh my god. And uh, so anyway, we accept our award and we're like walking off stage to go take press photos and whatnot. And um, I hear like, go ninja, go ninja, go, go ninja, go ninja, go, coming from the stage. And uh, me and my the rest of my cohorts who actually raided tonight from the Valley Folk, thank you guys, uh, we're all like, uh, hold on one second and kind of handed our award off to somebody and went out and just partied our faces off with Vanilla Ice. It was That's amazing. That's pretty cool. It was very cool. And then we came back and of course, did like all the press stuff we needed to do. Oh, yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was, that was a super surreal moment for sure. That is very cool. If you think about the what time it... travel element of it though, like telling the 10 year old version of yourself that one day you would get to hang out with Vanilla Ice probably sounded way cooler than it ended up being like 20 years later. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, F. I'm trying to, oh, Kate, you're the only one still in. Yep. I'm trying to find Kate's bean. I got gotcha. you. It oh, sounds eight, eight, so eight, one, three, six. Doesn't that sound so dirty? Trisha, don't, don't, you have been hanging out with Kate too long already. She's I a bad influence anything. on you. I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> No, Did I think I, I think baby Trisha would be guy? would be would oh, be thrilled fuck. with uh, with grown up Trisha. You're like one of the nerdiest people I know. I hope, yeah, I hope so. But like I in think... a cool way though, like you you like you you do something that is very difficult to do, which is you make being nerdy actually cool. Oh, that is very kind of you to say. I just always feel like I'm riding by the skin of my pants and hoping it goes okay. One of the I things that really I was know. most impressed to learn about you, Trisha, <gasps> is that you are a um master PC builder. You, you build all your own PCs and in fact, teach other people how to do it. And you've even done, like you told me that you did like a live. <gasps> oh my God, Kate, you're oh, so lucky. So, so <laughs> lucky. Oh my God. Didn't you, do a thing, didn't you do like a live event at TwitchCon where you like pulled someone out of the audience and like taught them to build a PC live yes, on stage? I was how to build a PC panel, um, which was put together by 
uh, the wonderful Leslie of AMD, and she. Um, oh, we love Leslie. Leslie's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and Leslie just happened to put together an all female panel, which was awesome because it wasn't advertised as like an all female PC building panel. It was just a PC, PC building panel that happened to have all women on it, um, which was cool. And yeah, we pulled up someone from the audience and during that one hour panel had half of us answer PC building questions and the other half help the person we pull out of the audience build their first PC. Oh, they got to uh, keep the PC? And they, they did, yeah, that was the surprise at the end of the panel was that they got to keep the piece. And how much help are you allowed to give them? Oh, so much. <laughs> I mean, we, we intentionally chose someone who had never built a PC before. Right. Because like the whole kind of messaging of the panel is like, don't be intimidated by it, you can do it too. It's easier than you think. I, I, I don't um, think that's true. PC, building a PC is tricky, I think. It's easier now than it's ever been though. Right. Like now it's just like very expensive and sharp adult Legos. I had, a, I had a friend of mine recently build a PC and he's no dope. Like he's a pretty nerdy guy. He knows PCs. Oh uh, no. Okay. Unlucky. No, Good all try. of us got messed up at the end. Yeah, Three of us went up try. and none of us Those got it. Those hammers will really throw you off your game. Um, yeah. And he was and he, he was like, yep, didn't post. You know, you always get to that, that, that uh, make or break moment when you press the power button and it either posts or it doesn't. I think every PC that either I've that I've been in any way a part of building did not post correctly first time. Like there's always something. Yeah, there's always something. And then you have to go through the nightmare that is troubleshooting why it didn't post. Right. I think this PC that I have here did the first time, but it's only because I got a very talented friend to come and build it for me, basically. I mean, that's the key. Find someone who knows who mm -hmm. knows how to do this stuff better than you. I don't, I don't know like, how to do things, but I am good at giving money to people who know how to do things. Yeah, I bought the parts, or brands sent me the parts, and then we took a really long time and built it. And it shouldn't have taken so long, but it was perfect, and we didn't have oh. to redo anything, which made me how, feel great. How long did it take you? It took, like, five hours. It sh I was going to say, it should take three to four hours. Yeah, it took a long time. Especially when you're building with someone else where, like, you're laughing and you're talking and, you know. Yeah, I if think it takes part longer of it, than three hours, you probably, I'm sure than three hours, you probably missed something. I'd be worried if it took that. Yeah. That well, cool. that's why it was crazy at TwitchCon that we were trying to have someone who'd never built before finish in an hour. But to right. be fair, they had two or three other people who had built a PC using those exact same components. Because it was an exact copy of the PC that's actually right over here. Uh, so then there's just kind of... Watching. Yeah, that's a little easier. This was yeah. a lot of like, I had a bunch of parts and we were hoping they would all work together and... <laughs> Right. It ended up working fine, luckily. That's great. Um, Trisha, but... what are you... Sorry, sorry, Kate. Oh, it was I didn't just... realize there was a butt. It was just tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 not easy for sure. Trisha, what are some of your top PC building tips that you that you've learned? Like, what do, what do you know? What do you know now that you wish you knew then when you were first starting out building PCs? Uh, PC part picker is the best. Mm. Use it. If you don't use PC Part Picker to figure out if all your stuff is compatible and if you're finding the best deal on the components you want and what power wattage would be appropriate for the build you're trying to yeah, put together. Yeah, I like that it, that it scans for compatibility because that can be a real problem. Mm -hmm. Like you can get perfectly good parts, they just don't, they're not compatible and you're screwed. Totally. So yeah, PCPartPicker.com is amazing. Um, also, cable management is my least favorite part of any PC build. Yeah. So if you can get a case that has like a, a i'm eliminated if you can get a case that has like a big shield in the back and like not tempered glass on both sides just on one so that you can hide all the cables behind that cover that's great right are we exiting out is that first did someone not make it i didn't oh then we're going it. back yeah okay. uh killer stop uh, chopstick in trisha's chat i'm sorry if that uh, comment about uh, knowing how to give money to people seemed uh toxic or quote unquote a terrible mentality i was really just saying that i know uh, my limitations i'm not applying like if there was a if my sp sink sprung a leak i wouldn't know how to fix it leah might but i certainly wouldn't oh, I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't try to fix it i would uh, defer to a professional uh who can yeah gary i'm 100 percent with you on the home improvement stuff i am just awful at doing anything myself like people are like oh you could just resurface these cabinets nope i will pay somebody to resurface those yeah, cabinets and trust me you don't I want do it... you don't want the plumbing job that i would do for you you really don't oh i uh, got booted back yep. to the lobby mm -hmm. Reinvite. I'll invite second. you. Oh, Gary? you want to invite? Okay. Yep. Because you're not in this group. We're back. There we go. 
We're back. All right. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> STS says, who resurfaces their own cabinets? Let me tell you, I have a lot of friends in LA that genuinely enjoy home projects. Um, and when I first owned my own house, which was very exciting, I was like, now I can do all these home projects and quickly discovered not only am I awful at them, it ends up taking me 10 times as long as it would take someone <laughs> that knows what they're doing and twice as much money as if I just paid someone because inevitably I have to buy all the parts and then I ruin them all in doing it incorrectly. And then I have to buy them all again and then hire someone to do to fix what I messed up. It's just awful. See, there are definitely situations where throwing money at the problem is the correct way to do it. Yeah, sometimes. I, I And I mean, that's the thing for me is I just, I respect people's talent that that's what they do and that's what they're good at. And if I don't have training or natural ability in something, by all means, somebody else, I would love to support you monetarily to help me with this thing. I mean, this Especially is the, with the basis of our entire economy. PC, yeah. the parts to them are so expensive in and of themselves that if you hex something up or you bend something or you break something or you plug something in and you whatever, like that could possibly be not good. Oh, for sure. Yeah, as much as you watch everybody on YouTube, myself included, being like, you don't need a shock strap. I've been building PCs on carpet for years and never had a problem. If you're unlucky, you could be the one person that has a problem. Yeah, uh, there are horror stories. So. I remember, I remember that that nerve wracking part because I remember like seeding the uh, the CPU in this most recent one. And Will, my friend who was helping me, was like, just remember, if you bend one of these pins. It's yep. game over. And I'm like, well, yep. Yep. Th thanks for telling me that right before I'm about to do it. I don't know if that helps yeah. or not. And then the other thing I learned about building PCs is it doesn't matter uh, how you build your PC. Once you post a picture of it on social media, there will be lots of helpful people along to tell you how you built it wrong. Yep. Oh, oh. so you're, you're being sarcastic with the helpful people. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, so, so fucking helpful, Trisha. They're, you know, oh, you know, yeah, that's, that's not how I would have done it. Therefore, you've done it wrong. You need to blah, blah, right. blah. Like, Go fuck yourself. Sorry. I mean, especially try that as a woman who built a PC. Oh, right. You're probably going to get then... it twice as bad, right? Let me, I, ex well, let me explain to I, you. Because I did have a friend here helping me build it. Not because I'm not capable, but because I didn't want to uh, uh, break anything because I don't know how PCs work. I'm capable in other ways. I did get messages when I posted on Instagram being like, well, good thing you had a man to help. Oh, it's like, really? Come on. Gross. Yeah, the most recent one that I did for TwitchCon, I actually, just because I enjoy building with someone else better, I think it's more fun. Yeah, it's uh, definitely, it's like a, company. a fun uh, jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, I had Leslie from AMD be my build buddy, and we filmed it for a new egg video, and there were lots of comments, and we got it to post the first time, which was amazing. Nice. Uh, but there were lots of comments that were like, they did a lot of stuff wrong, don't watch this. And I'm like, you know what? I build a PC, it works beautifully. It's worked beautifully for a long time. Not Are we all long still long. around? Yep. Good, good. GG's. Trisha, Trisha, what did you think of the internet uh, blowing up and freaking out when Henry Cavill built that PC? Oh my God, I thought it was so funny. Yes. That was the it best. It was like my favorite thing that happened. It was so funny. And like when you watched it too, like he knows exactly what he's doing. That was gonna be my question. Did you watch the whole thing and how would you rate his PC building skills? Cause that was the, that was I, the thing that people was like, oh shit, he actually knows what he's doing. Oh yeah, no, he definitely built a PC, but it was all 100% done with the like, I'm going to make this full of as much innuendo as possible. And oh, I am you know what he was up to? trying to make mm -hmm. a sexy PC build. Yeah, video. I mean, he didn't wear, he didn't need to wear that tank top. Let's be honest. It was he very funny. I mean, many people are but glad that he did. I know but I, is. I also very do appreciate, funny. I appreciated the fact that, you know, he took breaks and checked the instruction manuals. And there was a few times where he was like, oh gosh, I don't know if this is quite right. Um, but took the time to make sure because he didn't want to bugger it up the first try, you know? Quite right. No, yeah, no, he definitely built that PC. It's amazing. For sure, I I enjoyed that immensely. It was very fun. But it's again, though, aren't we aren't we like... being a bit um, prejudiced there? I mean, just because like, just because he's like a handsome dude, what he can't build a PC? Why are we surprised by this? I I I, I think I it was... was surprised by the fact that he did it in such a sexual way. That's what I thought was so funny about it. So it wasn't like surprised in a negative way. I have this way. feeling that I'm going to go to this video and watch him. I'm I'm, I'm going to watch it and it's going to seem completely normal to me. But Kate and Trisha's like, oh no, that was like really sexual. No, it definitely is. I honestly <laughs> like, think the part of it for me that was the best wasn't like, oh, he's good looking. 
it was the fact that you see a mainstream celebrity of his um, uh, stature, fame caliber, level. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, caliber. Just doing a thing that you know yeah. us normal folk do, where hey, he that... could he could pay anybody for the most the most high end high totally. spec PC. Right. But he wanted to build one himself, and well, I respected the hell out of that. I thought he, that was super fun. He wouldn't have to pay anything. Some of the like, ten different companies oh, would give yeah. him one for free. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, but no, I, no, I, I, I respect that. And I do respect yeah. that he turned it into a thirst trap as well. I mean, why not? Oh, yeah. he, that's, for him. that's the best way to say it. He 100% intentionally made it a thirst trap, and it was very <laughs> funny. Um, and you know what? But thirst traps are allowed. I've always joked around with my PC build videos that, like, almost everything you say in a PC build is an innuendo if you want it to be. Thermal like, paste. Well, no, but, like, everything's about, like, <laughs> Make sure you get the screw in the right hole and don't right. screw too hard and yeah. line it up just right. Like there, there's a lot of that <laughs> in there. There's, there's a lot of that. I'm starting to understand why you two get on so well. Yeah. <laughs> make, it makes more and more sense to me the more I watch you two interact. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm hmm. Oh yes, but yeah, Gary, go watch that video. You will laugh. I'll 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 check it out. I, I just also it. appreciate it because it happened. Okay, time is uh, not a concept to me anymore, but it happened during quarantine, right? Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay, I think so too. I really don't know, but I think it happened at such a time where people were just grasping for any sort of joy that they're like, this superhero that I like is doing a thing that I do, and like it's fun, yeah. and everyone was losing their minds over it. Yeah, and and it was just like. It was just a fun internet moment. I think the fact that 2020 has sucked so much has meant that those little moments have, have stood out more. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I feel like every time I open up Twitter, I just get sad. Yeah, the right? doom scrolling. Doing it. So, yeah, I, the doom scrolling. Exactly. I also appreciated his little headlamp. <laughs> oh, I have one Probably. of those. Yeah, I and just thought fact, it was I look great. exactly like Henry Cavill when I put it on. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> it's remarkable. I can't go out wearing it because I get stopped for autographs and like, I'm not and Henry Cavill. Anyone who wants to look like Henry Cavill, all you need is a headlamp. You Done. don't need to go to the gym. You don't need a, a <laughs> chef and a trainer and the you know whoever he's got on his staff. You just need a headlamp. Pretty Easy much. It's really, so it really, funny. it really is. I'm so trying to stay alive right now on Jump Club. I know this one's so terrifying to me, Kate. I saw you own at this. Yeah. I, Kate, I, Kate, did, Kate, did a, Kate did a ice in her I veins. I say that uh, and then I just got grief. Oh, man. But Kate did an ice in her veins jump showdown that was uh, probably her most impressive highlight of the night, I thought. Yeah. That was, was that, that was just an endurance. It an endurance good. race. Gary, are you still in? Are you oh, both yeah. still in? Okay, no, good. I just got griefed on the last rotation. Oh, so it's just Gary. Was, you getting griefed is actually what got me through, I think. It is, in fact. All right, I'll try to honor your memory as we move forward here. Am I, am I the only it. one left? Yep. Oh, that sucks. Okay. All right. You got it that. though. We'll see. You got it. You got we'll it. See. I want to talk, Trisha. I want to go back to that because co the cosplay really, really is impressive. How did you first get into that? Oh, you're so nice. Um, I just, I like when I moved to LA, it was the first that I was like, oh, San Diego Comic Con. What is this? Uh huh. Uh, so it wasn't until I moved to the West Coast, because in Philly, I if there was if there were comic conventions, I was not aware of them. Um, like I said, I was a real loner as a kid. Like I found friends as I got older. College was probably the first time I really started finding my people. Um, but yeah, when I moved out to LA, I had nerdy friends in LA that were like, yeah, Comic-Con. I was like, okay, yeah, Comic-Con. And I started going to Comic-Con and when I realized that, you know, people just dress up like characters they love, I was like, oh man, I'm getting in on that. And then when I realized, cause I was like, at first, you know, I think I was like most people and I was like, how do I, where can I buy these costumes? And then I realized the craftsmanship that goes into them and how so many mm -hmm. people specialize in makeup or wig styling or you know or, or patterners and seamstresses and leather workers and god. Oh, people god. that make this... armor and props and like it's amazing when you look at what goes into it um and some people are just true true artists so you know humble beginnings i started oh making like super easy stuff look at um, this did you what did you see what happened there kate i i did it was it was bogus Sorry. What happened? I, got, I love it. The ham, I, I, I don't, you know, it's so painful. I don't want to talk about it. I'm sorry. Trisha, are you out? Saying, 
I'm out. I'm back to the lobby. Tell us about. Tell us more about the cosplay. I'm sorry. The, I got. I had a, the worst um, rock and roll scenario you could imagine. There. It was bad. It was not good. So, did you start with like the kind of pre-bought costumes that you might see? Uh. Or did you start I like making them the yourself? First, the first one that I made was, uh, and this was a long time ago. The first one that I made was Daenerys as the Khaleesi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's like the brown kind of burlap. And so I thought, you know, if I don't really remember how to do a straight stitch or anything like that from costuming class in college, that's okay. Because this need like, this should look more rugged and kind It'll of- It'll look intentional. Out. Right. So, right. uh, so I made that and I didn't make it super well. And it was like falling apart my entire first convention. So I was bringing double-sided fabric tape, trying to like stitch myself up on the fly. Um, and then there were some that I kind of bought and then modded myself. Um, and so I did a lot of like buying pieces that were close and then modifying them because I don't really do patterns from scratch. I don't know how to do that. I have immense respect for people that do that. Um, and then, yeah. And then I just, you know, every, every cosplay I build, I kind of learned a new thing. But unfortunately when I do, when I used to do like a cosplay build, it's like all my sewing stuff and fabrics and stuff like that laid out for weeks at a time. Cause it takes me 80 to a hundred hours oh, per wow. build for the more intense builds. And so ever since I, ever since I had a child, I was like, well, I can't leave sharp objects just laying all over my floor for weeks at a time anymore. So very diligent. Right, so that took a back seat for a little bit. So uh, now what I like to do is find my friends who don't have childers, who are incredibly talented and looking for work and say, hey, can you help me? Um, and, and like commission them to make the cosplays for you? Well, it, yeah, usually pieces. So like I have one friend that's a prop builder. Oh, cool. So I, when I did my last Wonder Woman, I was like, can you make me a God Killer set? Like the, the sword and the shield. Um, and he did, and it's beautiful. Um, and I have friends that are really great seamstresses. Oh, I'm so dead. Uh, Come on, you can do it. You got time. Uh, maybe not. I don't, yeah, I don't think I do. You could get lucky. You could get lucky. You maybe? could get lucky. Oh, oh yeah. so close. So close. Was that first round? Was yeah, it? back to the lobby. Yeah. Sorry, guys. No, it's all That's good. Fine. Happens to the best of us. But yeah, so I mean, now I'm, I settle on a hybrid of like, sometimes, or I'll usually make parts of my own and then ask or commission other parts of it so that I get the full thing and I'm not having to do the entire build. Um, but it's also why I used to go to Comic-Con with four new cosplays for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I don't do that anymore. Now yeah, I'm lucky if I have one new one per year. When I see what some of these cosplayers bring to these conventions now and like giant, you know, steamer trunk type, you know, it's, it's like a whole prop department what some of these people bring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. actually at the Twitch con, uh, cosplay contest a few years ago, uh, I saw a Reinhardt who was like eight feet tall Heck and his yeah. armor took up like a full sprinter van. They had to like rent a van or whatever and drive it because they couldn't fly it and all this kind of stuff. It was nuts it is seeing no the kind thing. of work that goes into it. And it was like lit up and That's I've- awesome. I'm so impressed by um, cosplay armor. Cause a lot of time it's oh, done wow. with like foam and you know, special paints and stuff. And it just looks so intricate and it looks heavy. Mm -hmm. And I guess when you have eight feet of it and you're cosplaying Reinhardt, it probably is at that point. It depends what it's made out of. Um, like foam core board can be a lot lighter. Like that God Killer set that my friend built for me is all foam core board, so it's not super heavy to carry around all day. It's like that Eva foam sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. I have a helmet behind me of that. Ah! Oh, oh no, no, no! No, 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 no. Okay, we made it. Are you working on anything? Oh, I guess there wouldn't be any reason to, right? Where would you wear? You're gonna strut around the house wearing it? What are you gonna do? Uh, so I know what my next cosplay is going to be because I, I just got eliminated. Sorry, guys. I know what my uh, next cosplay is going to be because I had Robbie. chat vote on it for a cha for a charity. Oh, fun. Um, so I'm going to do a DC Bombshells Catwoman. <gasps> it's going to be my next one. Okay. Yes. Is that and a particular already... kind of Catwoman? Yes. Uh, oh, yes. If you look up DC Bombshells Catwoman, it's a very specific look. And I... Uh, I reached out to a friend of mine 
who makes costumes for Broadway and for national tours. And I was like, hey, what do you think of this? And she was like, well, it's gonna be really hard to get that fabric and to get the fabric right, but let's talk about it. So we'll see. I mean, it's the pandemic, so I think everyone's moving a lot slower than they normally would, but. Yep. <laughs> Maybe it sounds like, actually, the more I think about it, it's like the nice kind of project to be working on in terms of thinking like, this is something I'm working on for like, when things get back to normal. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like a hopeful thing to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, when I can actually go to a fabric store again and feel different fabrics and find the exact look and texture fabric I want, that'll be awesome. Let's go back to the lobby. Yeah, this is not populating. Nope. Oh, All right, here. we'll try again. Yeah, there's try like 20 again. different ways you can not get into a game in Fall Guys. So Trisha, bizarre. you mentioned that you had your chat vote on your cosplay for a charity event. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of charity work, don't you? I With do. Like I actually have life. one. Yeah, I have one coming up for Breast Cancer Awareness Month next Sunday. Oh, wonderful. Um, not, not two days from now, but the one after that. And that's um, going to be on your really channel? Fun. Yeah, and if either of you are free and want to participate, let me know. I haven't done my outreach yet. Uh, but I plan on reaching out to people and just whoever wants to be involved, come be involved. Um, but it's going to be for Rethink Breast Cancer to kick off Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And the one where we voted on the cosplay was for the entire month of June. I was raising money for I Need Diverse Games. Oh, cool. Yeah, because all different types of people should be able to create and play games. And I think that that will only allow us lots more diverse stories and storytelling and that that charity is for both video and tabletop games that's wonderful And their slogan is because there's room for everyone at the table and as a girl who as i told you guys was like not that there wasn't room for me at the D, &D table but it was you know it was a little bit of a thing uh i love i just love the message that there's room for everyone at the table absolutely yeah so yeah, we, we voted on DC Bombshells, Catwoman. Oh, I'm so gonna die. Oh, I'm so gonna die. <laughs> you got time, Trisha. Oh, you got time god. to make it back. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm st I'm still all the way back at the beginning. I'm nowhere. There's a big pack oh, back here. See, this is uh... one of the tough ones where there's no middle section, and then there's uh, the seesaws that are the, the opposite way. Oh, th I, those are the ones I really dislike. Wait, are there two different seesaw levels? There's, there's multiple. There's like several oh variants now. Yeah, they remixed it and did like different versions like of. Oh my, my god, mind. I'm so I'm in so much trouble. I'm in I'm that... in such good shape because I'm in first right now. Wow. That this pink one looks like death, but I gotta go somewhere. Yeah, this is. I mean, I'm I, I'm right here with Trisha. I'm on the same platform as her right now. Yeah. Look at this. Oh my god. Trying to make it happen. Trying to just just trying to power my dreams. <laughs> I just zoomed right to the front. Nice. Gary, um, uh -oh. I even have my glasses on and I still oh God, feel like it looks like on? there's like a little heart over your guy's head. I'm, I'm... <laughs> I know I'm it's all... a triangle. I'm all weirdly bugged out here. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Oh, what is this? That's what I'm saying. Oh, I hate it. I hate everything about it. The timing of this one is so bizarre. Yeah, it's, 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 it's ugly. Just when you think oh, you couldn't hate you go, Seesaw you anymore. Oh yeah, you're good, you're good, you're good. You're good, yeah. you're good. Go, go, Yay. go. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Move on. Good job. Well done. Well <laughs> done. And that is, I think that's the most difficult Seesaw variant. Agreed. Just because of the ones that are running the opposite way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was rough. Uh, this is my first time playing since the update. So anything that was new in the update, I don't know. Oh yeah, oh, so, yeah you're sure. going to start seeing some of the wacky variants for sure. So much that's different. I think I asked you this question right at the beginning of the stream and then we never actually got around to answering it. What's your favorite level? What is your least favorite level? Uh, I, slime Climb, I think, is my least favorite level. Okay. I hate it. It causes me so much stress. <laughs> um, and maybe my favorite one is... I don't know. For a while, I was doing really well at... I forget what it's called, but it's just the one with all the... Um, all the platforms that just go around in circles. It's all the different wheels. Dizzy and heights. Just, yes. You jump from one this to one. We, this we one. Just, we just pulled yeah. it. There you go. This one right here. We manifested Agro it. Dizzy heights. Yeah. I, I, at least in my early runs, was doing okay with this one. Okay. I don't think I know what your favorite and least favorite are. You know what my favorite is? Uh, is it hexagon? 
No. I thought it was. This is awkward for me now. I've, oh, it's we've... slime climb. No, it's not. What? No. It's. Oh my god. You you literally I'm... said the words earlier. Is it still your favorite level? Oh, so, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, of course. Seesaw. See, see it's, yeah. like, I, I, it's like my, part of my brain doesn't want to accept it. That's, I think, the reason why I'm not, I haven't like, fully processed the information. Because it makes zero sense to me. All right, what's your least favorite? I think out of, like, one I just don't enjoy that much, it's probably match game. Yeah. One I'm least skilled in. Like, I see and I'm like, well, I'm not going to qualify here. Yeah. Um, Any of the tail games. Oh, geez. Yeah, don't get Ooh. me started. I don't, I don't like, like tail Team game. Tail Tag. I don't like Royal Fumble. I don't like... And I think I would enjoy them more if the net code wasn't completely fucked. Yeah, I wonder if they're working on that. They must know that they've got work to do there. Like, Can the I... net code of that game got me eliminated from multiple tournaments. So this Dizzying Heights is different. Yes, this is the one of the variations. So in the update got that it. came out, like, a week or two ago, they mm -hmm. took all the levels and gave 90% of them random variants. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm like, where are all these balls coming from? Yeah, like, sometimes the balls are oh, free, sometimes... Is this round two or round uh, This is round two, I believe, yeah. Round two, right. yeah, so keep going, we, guys. We, move, we progress. Um, yeah, there's variants or things have timed differently, so everyone that spent all this time figuring out the perfect strat, um, they now need to rethink it's how season, to play these it. levels. And season two right around the corner as well. Mm-hmm. With the medi with, with the with the, the, moving the furniture in. pieces around, that's going to be a whole a whole scenario. It'll be a thing. I'm excited. I think I think it sounded to me like they've designed that deliberately to make people as as annoyed with each other as possible. I'm excited. Can't wait. Uh, just to great. update everyone, no, I have not gotten my crown yet. I'm oh. I'm not super great at this game. However, it's so funny because when I played my first ever experience with this game was the demo at E3 and I got my crown out of the people playing in the E3 demo. Oh, good it job. Was just, it was like me and seven other people. So I got a crown out of eight people. I mean, I don't That's know. I, if it were me, I would, I, would, I, would, I would claim it. Oh, yeah. They gave me, I don't know if I still have it or if my sons wandered off with it, but they gave me like a big yellow foam crown to take home. I'm around here somewhere. I think my... Oh, somebody just walked right off the edge. I got I nervous there I because good. I was like, when you're the only one standing on a tile and other people are looking at you yourself. and then you're like, is it me? But no, I had it right. But I got very uh, discombobulated there for a moment. Yes, chat. So what I'm saying is that everyone at the demo was worse than me. <laughs> Which, hey, they were all games industry people. So again, I'll take the win. Okay, did you just hero leap onto that tile? Yeah. And you just barely made it. I know. Keeping it interesting, keeping it spicy. Hey, not worried. No, I'm chilling. All the pressure is off. I feel like my shoulders have been like seized up for two days, and now that the tournaments are over, I'm just kind of relaxing. But now I feel all the pressure in my shoulders, and it really hurts. Oh. I'm that sorry, was a close that one. Sound fun. No, it's not fun, but it's okay. It's all good. So good. All I'm right. so excited to be playing Fall Guys with you tonight. Thank you again for having me. Thank it's, you for being here. It's it's the it's the chill time with friends. I think we all needed at the end of at the end of this week. I know, right? And as much as I want to like keep interviewing you and stuff, I'm like, it's just nice to play with you because you're our friend. <laughs> and it's oh fucking tail tag. You, um, it's like it's it's listening to every level that we, we bring up and it's like oh you like, you like Heights, i heard you like tail tag yep <laughs> but yeah it's just oh, nice so to funny. hang out with trisha i hate this i, I mean, know it was funny i was saying to my husband i was like yes i'm i'm going to guest on a show tonight but i'm really just hanging with gary and kate yeah honestly because <laughs> in person right now the three of us would be together at twitchcon having dinner and drinks or something it's like true. that it's true it's true so this is this is filling the gap yeah and yeah. technically you are a guest on a show but come on we all know what we're really doing here. Uh, we're, we're just playing Fall Guys and Gavin. A high level interview whilst playing Fall Guys. I mean, we've we've done the interview portion. Certainly, you did it. I, I, th I think we I think we've we, we've uh, covered uh, most of the most of the bases. I did want to because I, I I did like two seconds of lazy research as well. And you um 
I was impressed to see that you have two Streamy Awards. That's a thing, isn't it? The Streamy is like a big deal. Yeah, Trisha yeah, was that's... speaking about it earlier. Oh, did I miss yeah. that? I must, I must have been like trying to not lose my tail or something. I apologize. Probably. It totally happens. Yeah, with uh, SourceFed, at my, for my time with SourceFed. I remember a year ago at TwitchCon, you reminiscing uh, very much about your time at SourceFed. Yeah, it was nice. Um, it was, you know, where I learned the ropes Fuck. of digital content creation. Uh, but yeah, so the first year that we went to the streamies, we won the Audience Choice Series of the Year Award. Mm. And then the second year, we won Best News Show, which was really cool. Um, we were oh. nominated for Best Gaming Channel, but didn't win. I'm in trouble here. I'm in go, trouble go, too. Go. I think I'm getting eliminated. Yeah, I'm done. I'm I grabbed done. someone, but it didn't work. I'm done. Yeah. I, I, I had a tail and then didn't have a tail, I think about 10 different times in that last 30 seconds. That was chaotic. Yeah. So, is everybody out or is Kate still in? Back to the menu. No, I'm out. We both got knocked out. Kay. That was a rough one. The best players in the game will get knocked out in tail tag because there's only so much you can do. Speaking oh, of, five seconds. Grand Pooh Bear is in my chat right now <gasps> and got knocked out during this earlier today. And it was devastating. Oh, man. And I think I also got knocked out in that same round. Ugh. There's Not only there's, there are some levels that there's only so much skill can really mitigate what this game will do to you, and tail tag is one where the random factor is is gonna get you a lot of the time. I just feel mm -hmm. like tail tag needs to be taken out of the game until they fix their net code. I think they do need to fix that, and also I think they could shave at least thirty seconds off the time. It doesn't need to be that long. Yep. It's ninety seconds right now. I think it should be like sixty at most. Agreed. Because, I mean, that is a game where you don't feel comfortable that you're going to qualify until you're qualified. Even the last second. Because we yeah. see so many of those last second grabs. It's it's insane. Yeah, that game that game I'm just awful at. What games are you best at, Trish? If you had to, like, play in a tournament, but you could pick any game, what would you pick? Or any kind of game? In Fall Guys or, like, video no, games? No, just generally no, 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 video in video games. games. Oh. Um... Puzzle games, resource management games, sometimes tricky platformers if I've played them a lot and the muscle memory is there. Um, Gary, your RTX is not on. You can tell, huh? Oh, I really can. I'll mute it in a Sounds second. Sounds like a good a good almond. The barbecue kind. I um, I got to turn my I, I, I upgraded to that Nvidia broadcast thing, but I haven't configured it yet. Mm. I was just gonna say, you playing with broadcast app? Well, I have to. The problem with it is, maybe it's okay. I turned it off because when I used to rage in this game, it would mute all my, my screams and shouts. Um, yeah. But since I don't really Shoot. do that anymore, maybe I can turn it back on. Um, I just had a video for Kingston go up on how to use that app today and what it is. Yeah, it's really it's cool. Really, it's really remarkable. I want to try the virtual green screen stuff. I haven't yes. messed with that yet. Please tell me if it's any good. Every other software green screen that I've messed with has not been good. I actually think so, Zoom's green screenless green screen works pretty good. Does mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it's not bad. Decent. Software green screen to me is like a fun gimmick for video conference calls, but it's not good enough. Oh, for no, not for pros. No. Yeah, or anyone making content. Well, and see, that's what I mean is I'm like, I'm waiting for the background removal to be good enough that you could legit use that instead of a green screen for right. your streaming setup. I think, we might, I think we might well get there. Well, NVIDIA claims that it will. So that's why I'm like, ooh, I want to see that broadcast app. I'm going to try it. I'm going to I'm going to mess around with it in the next few oh. days and we'll see. I want to yeah, use broadcast to um, increase like the blur on the, like, the, the bouquet. bouquet on the back of my stream. Oh, so that yeah, yeah, so that's the other thing that it's doing, right? Is create is, is mimicking that DSLR effect. I, I'm curious to see how well right. that works as well. Yeah, so I mean that'll be the same software edge detection as the background removal, but I think there's more room for oh butt face. There's more room for error. Yeah, it's basically what the iPhone portrait mode iPhone. does, right? Just in video. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which uh, I've been playing around. My new phone can do it in video, which is cool. Ooh. Yeah, right. Oh, I got eliminated. Oh, no. Um, That's okay. Is Keep that first going round? without me. No, we go Are back. You sure? We can just go back to the lobby. What are we doing? Okay. Back to the lobby. We're going back to the lobby. Yeah, back we, to the lobby. We, we ride or die as a, as a team around here. 
I love it. Uh, everyone in my chat is saying Paperboy. I am really good at Paperboy. If that's, I'm actually, I'm really good at most original NES games because that's what I spent hours and hours and hours playing. So like, I could take anybody and double dribble on the NES, that basketball game, or like Kings of the Beach, or yeah, a lot of, a lot of those. Games. That would be your like, I need <laughs> to show off my gamer skill game. I need to show off my gamer skill game is probably Paperboy. What game are you the worst at? Like, no matter every, how you try. Every shooter. Every sh Really? <laughs> All of them. I'm not bad at shooters, but, like, I played Among Us the other day. And I'm just not good under pressure. Okay. That's fair. Let's say I'm not good under pressure when it involves lying to my friends. Because I'm, I'm good at being under pressure in other uh, gaming situations, but not not that one. I still haven't played that. I think I might be the last I... person left that hasn't played Among Us. It's fun. It's it's Mafia, but in a video game. Yeah, Gary, I think says. you've somehow turned your gain up. Uh, no. <laughs> oh. Gary's all I, all I did was, all I did was mute game. to spare you oh. uh, my arm and crunching, and then I turned it off again. Oh. But I turned the gain down a dial, uh, if, just in case, if that helps. I don't. I think there are people out there that are loving your mouth noise ASMR. A little mukbang, a little ASMR. I'm kind yeah, of mashing up yeah. all the all the best streamer I tropes hate over here. Mouth noises. Little fall guy, <laughs> you know, like masticating. No, I really don't like hearing people eat. I really like the word masticating, though. The word. word is fantastic. Ah no! Okay, I don't like this variant, so I'm just gonna drop no. down low and do the spinny doors. I feel like that's the tech. I could be wrong. Is the is the jump just uh, bouncy? It's like a bounce castle. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, it's extremely right bouncy. Here. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for this big yeet here. Yeah, yeah, do it. Might as well take it. Uh, I got oh. a tiny yeet off it. I, I got a tiny yeet oh. as well. I think like this barely a yeet. It was a lowercase yeet. Oh, so you're this? You're trying to get this yeet? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll yeet you all the way up to the finish line. Oh come on, Gary. Oh, I didn't get it, and I fell in the troll jump. Oh no! You still got time? Come on, get oh, up here. Oh my god! It took me all the way back here. Are you? You don't. Kidding you me? you don't have time. No, it took me no. so far back. Here's so, a question so from back. my chat, Trisha. If you could live inside any video game, what would it be? Ooh. Oh, that's a great question. Like Did we all qual, by the way? No, uh, I oh. did not. Are we going back? <laughs> sure. Yes. I'm going back. I'm going back. We're going to get through this first round together, or not at all. all Some right. musketeer spirit around here. I might need to go back to Wolfhead. I think I was doing better with Wolfhead. Um, like, I, I feel like living in something like Breath of the Wild would be wonderful. But then Except at, for all those monsters. Correct, exactly. I'm like, oh, the you know the beautiful landscapes and all like the you know that sounds wonderful. And then I'm like, oh, the monster part sounds pretty bad. Yeah, that sounds pretty heinous. It's not good. Uh, isn't that Sims? Technically, Sims? a post-apocalyptic world, Breath of the Wild. It's pretty grim, as I recall. Wait, you grim. say you want to live in the Sims? Yeah, does that count? Wouldn't, or is wouldn't that, that just involve life? you living in a house and having a normal life? Except for, do I have the control that you have in Sims? Like, could I just get myself different jobs and pause time and manipulate relationships and stuff? Because essentially, you'd just be God. Okay, all right, I get it. I don't know, that's a thought. I mean, there's so many great fantastical video game worlds. And I'm sure I could think of all the games I like that were dark. I would like to live in Aerith's house in Final <gasps> Fantasy 7 Remake. Uh, can I just tell you, Kate, my chat was saying earlier that they think you look like Aerith and they can't unsee it. That's the nicest thing anybody's ever said about me. I know you were talking about something else, so I didn't want to interrupt you, but I was like, Mental oh my note, God, Kate later. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, is that an attractive character or something? Why is, is that? A, a, there's a compliment. Aerith is thing? beautiful. She's a babe. Okay. Yeah, Aerith is a babe, and she is also awesome. Like personality and looks. I was She's actually a babe inside and out. The uh, voice actress for um, Aerith streams on Twitch, 
And as I was going in, this was like one of the moments where I was like, holy crap, my seven-year-old me who played Final Fantasy VII when it came out is losing her mind right now. The voice actor for Aerith came into my chat, raided me with like several thousand people on the day after launch or something. Amazing. And, and they all got to hang out, including her, and watch me beat the game. So fun! And I was just like, oh my god, like, Aerith is here, and like, her community is here, and how cool is this? It was just like, the most amazing experience, and uh, yeah, seven-year-old me was losing my mind. Well, and you know that she's been streaming since before she got that voiceover gig. Yeah, like, she's exactly. been streaming forever. Yeah. Guys, I am I am doing so poorly. Come on, Come on you can do it. This. There's spaces for you. I you can am, go. You can get a, get I across am, there. Do it now. So go now. Cool. Dive. Yes, you got it. You're gonna be the, the last one people. over. Yeah. Last I, one I, over. Yeah. Look. Look at this. You got it. Yay! <laughs> that poor wolf flying through the air. See, the wolf costume didn't help that poor bastard. I played all of my Final Fantasy VII playthrough dressed as Tifa. <gasps> I love that. <laughs> I love it. I still have She's to play that aesthetic. remake. It's been sitting on my PlayStation since it came out. Ooh, it's so good. I know. Ooh, people it's people so keep telling me. You know what? I cried when I played that game too. Now that I think about it, I guess I do cry. <laughs> oh, I wait. No, I cried at that game too. Actually, no, I cried. Oh my god, I cried at things. I cried at the opening credits to Tony Hawk Pro Skater Remake. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah, because that was a nostalgia hit, where I was just like, "Oh my god, this is the best." Here's a variant. Okay. Seesaw is gonna split. Now, Gary, you you told me about a Fall Guys Pro Strat last time we were playing this together that's haunted me forever. Oh, God. And you said, I forget which level to, it was on, but by the way that it pans over the level in the beginning, you were like, I know which door is going to open. Oh, yeah, that's I still in. That's on DoorDash. That's still in there. I know. What I now know how to do the last three doors, Gary. Oh, cool. My teammate today taught me. That's what hangs, Whoa, happens when you hang really? out with these uh, elite esports types. You'll learn all kinds mm -hmm. of crazy strats. Can I just tell you, uh, Kate included, everyone I've met that's like a professional esports player has been absolutely lovely. I've always heard so about, you know, all the toxicity in yeah. esports and that kind of stuff. But I will just say, not that I've run into that many, but the people I have run into have been awesome. I've run into a few not great ones. But the majority of the ones that I do know and like have become friends with and stuff are lovely people. Yeah. Okay, is this another one where you want to get yeeted? Probably not, right? I have not yeeted in this particular I spot because I don't trust it. I am it. going across the finish line unyeeted. What is this person like a minotaur? Uh, oh wait. Oh my I'm, God, uh -oh. I just died looking at the minotaur. I couldn't stop looking at him. What is he? <laughs> That's a mammoth. Oh yeah, it's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a Stone Age hunter wearing like a mammoth skin on his head. <laughs> I think, I think it's called Hunter, that skin. Oh. Part of it, yeah. It's wow. Like a thing. You got this. You got this, Trisha. Come on, look. You're almost over. Uh, this way. Oh, just go. Barely. You got it. Easy go, 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 go. Easy. Hey, don't you claw. grab me, you butt face. <laughs> Ooh, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, I might have to clip that. <laughs> Yeah, see, now, good, now, my, now my raging in games has just turned into the most PG of insults. I know, it's like adorable rage. <laughs> the rage is still there. It's all the same anger underneath. It's just completely, like, <laughs> censored now. It's all put through a filter that's appropriate for my three-year-old. Although I probably don't want my three-year-old saying butt face either, but I would rather that than the... I mean, it's going to happen whether you want it to I or not. To At some I point, know. yeah. My, my kid still, you know, loves to say poopy butt face and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, I'm, and then so do I. I mean, it's funny at any age. You can just well, get away with it less as you get older. That's kind of what I've learned uh, with my stream and having to like, because I, a lot of, like when I rage now, I don't know what word's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> I, I default, I learned I default to desserts a lot. Okay. Really? So like, oh, brownie muffin tart 
Oh, wow. that sounds you know, good. Like, okay. I would love one of those oh, right now. Oh, you mean as like placeholders. I get it. Okay. <laughs> yes, a brownie muffin follow. tart does actually sound pretty good. Sounds delightful. I don't know what that is, but whatever it is that she just invented, that is something I want. Right? Yeah, it happens. Um, and so then it, I, it to me is almost funnier than if I had said whatever I was initially intending to say. So it ends up working out. Oh god, this okay. is a tough one for me. Uh, cherry, orange, apple. I don't know where anything is. I don't know where anything is. I think I'm on the right one, but I'm just not sure. Everybody that was the other thing I learned from watching Formania yesterday was uh, on Perfect Match, like you could see how some people did their mnemonics like to remember where things are yeah yeah i've noticed that in team games people take a quadrant of four and then they right. do the first letter so right c a o whatever it's always it's always the one that i didn't see it's on me right, i'm pretty right. sure I, I got it but like i had to go i had to go with kate because i had four of them memorized and it was the fifth one of every course. time qualified every yeah time are you um did you uh do any pre-ordering uh these past week or two uh trisha for a next gen console are you are you in in that craziness no i am a pc gamer so it's not as important to me like, do you not have consoles everything... in the house I do have consoles in the house okay. but it's not my main go-to and right. a lot of the games that they've announced as next gen software are also coming to PC. Yes. So true. it's not like as imperative that I have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X on launch day. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like, are you as more long excited? As I can play the games on PC, I'm fine. What so are you more this? excited about the 3090? Uh, no, because the 3080 and 3090 are both so big, I don't know if they'll fit in my current. I, I saw a picture of someone holding that 3090 and it's it's monstrous. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Are we trying to get it in our goal? We are, huh? Yeah. We're, we're just trying to keep him in our zone. Yeah. So we're trying to hoard him. Okay. Um, I think I definitely need a new power supply if I'm getting one of those 30 series cards. Do you know what you have right now? Yeah. I have a 2080. No, I mean so power I, supply. Oh, uh, six something. Oh, you'll need, yeah, you will definitely need more. That, for sure. That's a, Yeah, that's just why I said that. Because <laughs> I, I checked... I need a 720, I believe, or 750. Yeah, I've, I, it's weird because no, I've heard con I've heard confusing things about that, like literally from people at NVIDIA. Like one person will tell me one thing. They'll say, oh, you need like 750. And another person will say, oh, you actually need closer to 850 because you want the overhead. It's like, okay, just tell me one answer. Yeah. But either I, either um, way. My, oh, we're, guys, we're going to die. My, uh, my friends at Alienware were like, hold oh, off. God. I don't know if it'll fit in your machine. We're in trouble here. Uh, we have two. Um, we are very in trouble. Okay, get that one back, get it back, get it I back. I mean, with the 3090 back. specifically, there is like an issue of like, how big is your case? I mean, just physical space. Right, that's what I mean. That, that's the bigger issue for me right now. And I only recently upgraded to a 2080 Ti. Right. So I'm not super like, yes, I need this new graphics card. However, I mean, they're saying twice it. the performance. So that would be amazing. But yeah, I'm just kind of playing the wait and see game. Did either of you pre-order anything? For the consoles I did, I got, I, have, okay. I technically have pre-orders in in one of each. Cause I'm that guy. I like to have the new shiny toys on launch day. Um, and I toyed with the idea of, of hunting down a 3080 as well. Um, Cause the other thing is like the 3090 is way more expensive and I think quite a bit bigger, but it sounds like the upgrade is like not that big of a deal. Well, from um, what I heard, at least what Nvidia was saying, they were saying twice the power of a 2080, right? Yep, that's what I heard too. Which, I mean, huge if true. Trisha, are I, you? You're uh, here, right? I'm here. Yeah. I'm gonna die so good. Well, we're all, I mean, we're all here, let's get it done. Yeah! We use everyone. How, wait, how did that even happen? Well, oh, there's too what? many people. I hate it. I hate it. I this, hate the, it. I hate yeah, this it. Will, I hate it. This will go it. pretty quick, I think. With oh this many my people. god, I hate it. I hate it all. This is going to be nutty. Oh, damn it. Oh, oh, light I'm cycle. I'm so bad at the hopping thing. I'm so bad at it. I have to do Gary's strategy. I'm so bad. Yeah, I just run around like a maniac, like the Benny Hill show. I'm That's what I do. The edges. I'm taking the edges. I'm going to cut these dudes off. No, fuck. Yeah, I'm all the way down to the blue. Oh, a very oh, bad good. thing just happened. I'm yeah, dead. you're on my I... level, so you know you're doing badly. I fell in the slime. Oh. I was doing so good. 
Uh, I am. I am just about done here. I'm watching you guys. You're both still in it. Go, go, no, go. No, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, Gary's done. Where's Kate? Is she? Oh, she's still around. There's Kate. There's Kate. I don't have much. Though. I don't have space. Not left. a lot of real estate. Oh no, Kate. No, I'm done yeah. here. You did ah! what you could. Oh. Two left. All right. Well, GG's to oh, the NPCs. Good. That wasn't for the crown, was it? That was. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. Hex is always fun. That's my first time of the night that I made it to a crown qualifier. Proud of you. Thanks, dude. Thank you. The worst I've had is a 20 person hex, which is the full, the full uh, level. And it's not yeah, good. I've seen 19 rough, rough, very rough, very, it rough. goes, I mean, it, you know, it, it goes quick. At least there's that it's a swift death for everyone. But the, uh, the crown winner, mm -hmm. no hex is brutal. It's by far my least favorite uh, final round game. I'm, I, I have a decent shot at any of the others, not hex. Just the worst. Trisha, what, um, what nerdy or and or career ambitions do you still have? Mm, I would love to host something on, uh, well, I would love to at, be a recurring host, I should say, or a regular host on a television program. Well, me too, kind of. Yeah, right? That would be really cool. Um, mm. So what like kind of G4, a show? G4 oh, yeah. has announced that they're looking for hosts, but I, from everything I hear from like industry people, they're still very in development. That's oh, kind really? Of what it sounds like, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, they're casting via hashtag as opposed to going through traditional industry casting means, which is always a little eyebrow raising. You know what I mean? Um, so we'll we'll see what happens, but I mean, I would certainly love to be considered or audition for that if that is a thing that happens. I'll be interested um, to see what kind of what the new G4 looks like when they when they do eventually put it out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be super rad. That would be amazing. The, old, the old one is um, kind of fondly remembered, I think. Yeah, I would agree with that. G4 I think so. has a lot of fans out there. I think I love so. a bit of Adam Sessler myself. What's not to love? Oh, Sessler's great. And I actually <laughs> had the um, I had the opportunity to work with. Kevin Pereira and a lot of the people behind G4 quite a bit when I was at Comic-Con HQ and doing What's News. So I know a lot of the OG G4 folk. I don't know how many of them are back for this new rendition. Um, but I got to work with a bunch of them at CCHQ and then I got to work with a bunch of them at Caffeine as well. So, I mean, if any of them are back on board, I hope that they remember me fondly. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, uh, and this I'm is sure not popping. Gary, Kate, you feel this way too. Not populating? No. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the um, menu one more time. I'm sure I, I'm sure you guys feel this way too, but I just kind of always feel like, especially with entertainment industry things, that like just don't ruffle any feathers and be kind to everyone and show respect to everybody and hopefully you'll get a reputation of being nice to work with and people will bring you back. That's the hope always. Yeah. I recently I heard that from someone that I recently worked with. They said uh -huh. that I was a joy to work with and I nearly broke down yeah. in tears. I was so happy. That's what you like, want. That's like the nicest thing I could possibly hear from someone that I've worked with in the past. Yeah. Especially because I thought I was a pain to work with in that scenario, just given the circumstances for whatever reason. And they said that and I was just like, so maybe it was all in my head and it was actually totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> that made me feel really good. I, I mean, think what the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me is, it's not that. No. <laughs> Gary, I'm shocked. I try to be nice. I think you're very nice. Thank you, Trisha. Mm. Really uh, you nice and I day. hit it off very quickly. I mean, I only knew you from Twitter, really, and that we had mutual friends before we met in person at TwitchCon, and then I was like, oh man, Gary Witta, like that guy. I always think it's kind of weird when you meet someone in real life for the first time that you've already kind of become friendly with on social media. Um, Cause it's like, is this the first time we've like, it's like, is this actually the first time we met? Cause you kind of feel like you know the person a little bit, but it does right. kind of like kickstart the friendship a little bit, right? Cause you're not starting from nothing. You've got right. some history together from chatting on social media and you, you know a little bit about each other already. So, you know, kind of greases the skids. Cause, yeah, because I mean, we were we were all like besties like within five minutes at TwitchCon, right? That was what was cool about it. <laughs> yeah, it was oh, great. 
Trisha, I, I got I just huh. got a meal that we had at the Game Awards confused with TwitchCon. I was like, yeah, I remember that time we went out and we had that Mexican food? And now I'm just really sad because I really want Mexican food. We did have amazing Mexican food after the Game Awards. After the Game Awards. <laughs> I was just really hungry and I was like, yeah, because Trisha and I went out for dinner that time. And I was like, wait, God. different time. Well, really good Mexican food. It was after the Game Awards and everybody else was going to a fancy pants industry drinking thing. And we oh, were yeah. all just like, let's go get Mexican And food. someone was like, Phil Spencer is there. You should go. And I was like, can we just get can Mexican just food get and margaritas, please? Burrito and margarita. <laughs> and we were like wearing really nice dresses and we were just like shoving our faces with burritos and like really cheap <laughs> drinks. That was way better than the hotel bar. Those margaritas were not good, but I enjoyed them because of the company. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. Did you? Was it like a good place that you went to, or like a divey place? Uh, in the middle. Like yeah, both. I was gonna say it was exactly both. It was, it was in the middle place. It was and they close. Were shutting down, so they wanted us to leave. Like we came in. I felt so bad as a former waitress. We came in as they were cleaning up, and they were like, "We're serving food for fifteen more minutes," and we were like, "Okay, we'll be so quick." <laughs> Because there was nothing really else in the area. It was the middle of December. We were in like fancy dresses and heels. <laughs> and we were just like, we don't want to walk very far and we don't we don't want to have to take a car. Can we please just have something? And it ended up being pretty good. Mm-hmm. Are we all good? Yeah, it's good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. All in. I also all had in, like baby. a two hour Uber back to where I was staying, and I was like, I yeah. need food before I get into this car. I had a really long Uber that night too because I Ubered down that night as well. Well, your Uber yeah. was two hours away. Yeah, because of all of the there's some some event was happening when events could still happen, um, and there was a lot of traffic, and it took two hours for me to get in, oh, like an geez. hour and a half for me to get back out. Luckily, Ubers are cheap though, down there. In LA, they are. Yeah, not so much yeah. in many other places, but in LA, they certainly are. That yeah, transformed yeah. my complete like going to LA scenario whenever whenever i go down there i would usually drive myself and do like the six hour drive down there just so i'd have my own car because mm -hmm. you know there's otherwise it's impossible to get around but since uber came out like it's really easy to do it now i can fly down and just like just uber from place to place or lyft because i prefer lyft as a company i prefer lyft mm -hmm. as well yeah yeah but it was so like easier. it was like 25 29 dollars i think for like the hour and a half ride and i was yeah. like this is great yeah and the car actually shows up in like two minutes yeah that's the best part you can actually rely on it to come get you i remember back in the days when like cabs were still a thing in la which they never really were you'd call a cab and you'd be lucky if it showed up at all right oh oh, oh gosh cabs in la were the absolute remember yeah worst. i mean they, I mean, they and it's got what they deserved statistics are something like DUIs have gone down by 70% in Los Angeles since Uber and Lyft became a thing. Right. There was it's just, just no other feasible option in Los Angeles. And public transportation stops really early. So if you stay out till bars close, like then there are there is no way to get home. Um, I remember friends of mine telling me about a service where you can call and like someone would drive up on a moped. Yeah. And you get your keys and they would drive your car towing their moped or throw their moped in the back of your car. <laughs> I've that seen that, yeah. What you could do before Uber and Lyft. But I don't think a lot of people knew about that. I mean, I remember my friends telling me about that, but I wouldn't have known what that number was if I ever had to call it. No, there was like weird little services like that where like, uh, oh, if I just got pushed off. Um, like mom and son would show up in a minivan and one of them would drive the... Uh, your vehicle and one of them would trail behind in their car and yeah. get you home safe. And I was like, that's smart. So I'm having this so. weird flashback to years and years ago. Some friend of mine who was super drunk insisting on driving home. And I literally took his keys and threw them in the drain, like in the sewer yep. drain. Good. He was not happy, but he's still alive today. So yeah, gotta be careful. I'd love to see it. Gotta be careful. So yeah, I've always been like, yay, Uber, yay, Lyft, um, from that angle, at least here in LA. But I mean, there, LA needed some kind of public transportation. It was so bad. There needed to be some option. Oh, yeah, Harry's I mean, favorite round. Oh God, yeah, and my number one. Please, yes, more block party. I love it so much. Actually, I'd still yeah. take this over tail tag. Yeah, me too. Tail tag so is still like, the, 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 the very ninth circle of hell. 
So you loving Block Party was definitely sarcasm. Oh, for, I, I, I have very bad luck on this level. <laughs> Just checking. It's, yeah. <laughs> You can generally, pretty much anything I say about if I like something in Fall Guys, you can pretty much assume I mean the opposite. Well, see, and Gary, this is why it's so fun for me to chat with you and hang out with you, is because I am rarely ever sarcastic, uh, and I have a hard time detecting sarcasm. It's, oh, dear. I gotta be honest, I'm always it's not, sarcastic. It's not something I like about myself. I don't think it's an attractive trait. I wish I did it less. Oh, but see, but then I find that I'm way too gullible, and so, you know, the grass is always greener. But it makes me, it makes me really laugh when I hear, like, you or Kate be sarcastic. I think if you can be sarcastic in a funny way, then that's yeah. good. But, like, if you're just sarcastic, like, it, that, that gets old really quickly, I think. Oh, just like the people that are mean, but pretend that they're just kidding? Oh, yeah. it's just a joke. Was... Lighten up. I hate My those people. Like that. She would say the nastiest things, and then... If it's a joke, why isn't it funny? Yeah, exactly. Oh, God, oh dear. I hate these planks. I get I get dragged, I've, I get caught up under them, I get dragged. I've seen an interesting... Gary. I've seen People. an interesting strat with these, where you can oh, get that. taken off into... into the background of the oh, game, yeah. basically. Oh, if yeah, you, if you land on the plank, sometimes it will, mm -hmm. it will glitch out and take you off the map. And you'll survive really? out there. Yeah. <gasps> what? And even That's if you crazy. fall off, you'll respawn back on the main area. It's really strange. People Takes are you straight to Cheater Island. Island. Oh no! No 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 I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I'm in! What did I Yay, tell you, Kate? Trisha! One second on the clock. Every time block on party. The clock every time. One second on block party. It's That's it for me. Bye bye, Gary. Every single time. All right, All right we'll so it's Team Trisha. Trisha. We're cheerleading for Trisha at this point. Oh my gosh, am I the This only is where she gets the crown. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I mean, gosh. this could be a final round right here. It could, could be. be a six, it could be a six aside right. fall ball. It could be any kind of business. Any kind of business. <laughs> and it's an egg scramble. Egg scramble. So that's going to oh, take us to eight. Yeah. So it's in the final scramble. round. Let's see. I enjoy egg scramble. People really hate the team games in general, but I enjoy them. Oh, I like them too. I think this one's one of the better ones. I think I think some of the more serious-minded players, like the tryhards and the esports guys, don't like it because it takes away their agency. Like it's they, they can lose and it's not their fault at all if they just get stuck with a bad team. Whereas in the other games, the fate is more in their own hands. But if, like, if you're just out to have fun, which most people are, this this I, I like the chaos of the team it, games. You know, it's hard. It's ours! We have it, Red! Get out of there! <laughs> Get that golden egg! Or Sorry, any my egg. Husband, my husband is going to come in here and yell at me. This <laughs> so close to where Logan is there you sleeping. go. Keep him coming. Keep him coming. Blue's, uh, Blue's got some work to do, actually. They're struggling here. That's, on the uh, egg count. Let go of me, you stupid Red. Let go of me, you stupid Red! I'm just trying to steal your egg. Get off my... <laughs> <laughs> There's some gold ones in there, Trisha. Go, go get them. I'm not trying, but these jerks are all. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, 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 these birds are defending their nest at this point. They are playing defensive. Okay, yeah, I guess they, they're trying to hold on to their lead. They don't want you stealing their golden eggs. They don't like it. Okay. Let's go see what's up over here. Wreak some havoc. I mean, yeah, I mean, any way you can get eggs from is, is, is a plus at this point. Because blue right now is, is on the current Dead. scoring going out. Ugh, it's so hard to jump with an egg. Jump, give me that egg, get it, get it. it I was watching uh, Pooh Bear play this, and he doesn't bother to take the eggs back to the nest. He just kind of tosses out as many as he can and just yeah. put them back in the in the playing field. Yeah, that's interesting. Because it's not really about having the most, it's just about not having the least. Right. right. Get, jump, jump, you stupid I think both, I feel like both strategies are valid. No, no, give me this. Give me this gold one. Get that golden egg. Get it. I know I'm trying to get it. Let's go. Let's oh, get look at it. that. You got it out. Get they away. no longer... Get... Oh, this could actually be a game changer. This could How be... They... I th oh, my God. I think... I literally think the egg just flung... It, right into the blue nest. The the gold egg just flung directly into the blue nest. I think Trisha and... just single-handedly saved that entire team. I actually... That's literally what just happened. Trisha. That was the incredible. Other... My other teammates somehow booted it all the way across the board. No, no, no. 
That was you. That was all. I think I, I think we need the clip. We're going to need the clip on that one. That was astonishing. That was amazing. I'm telling you, this is the crown right here. Hang on, hexagon. Oh, no. Just take your time. <laughs> yeah. Be calm. Listen to Kate. Oh. She's you only need to beat right five now. other people. Or two, four, six, seven other people. Okay. Dive to these tiles up here. Oh, nope. okay. I'm just jumping. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm Try to jump in the center of the tile. Jump, jump. Nope, nope. Jumping. You're doing it. You're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Jumping, I'm jumping. You can do a little pause on the tile as well. The, the jumping technique is good from what I see. Okay. Oh, oh what? You like all three layers. Damn, that's going to hurt. That happened. Okay, now I'm just going to go for the layer. You do it's in your heart at this point. You <laughs> Now you've got more room to maneuver. You've got some time down here to yourself. Sabotage everybody else. Acres of space. I'm just gonna. And there's still, I mean, you still like three or four layers below you. There's, there's room. I think there's somebody taking out the bottom row, though. Is yeah, there? Oh, somebody, there is. Yeah, there is someone down the there for row sure. In the middle. Okay. Well. All right. Start thinking about where you're gonna go next. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so close. Oh. You almost had that other little uh, blue area there. Oh, just know that. I think Trish drop, is playing quite well. If you drop through yellow, very little of blue underneath is left. Yeah, be aware of what's under you right now. Okay. You've got blue under you right now. You're good in that area. There's two people below you. Okay. Oh yeah, there's a big chunk missing right in the middle. Big chunk. Nope. Ah! No. Unlucky. 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 There it went. Thank you guys for the. That was a good. That was a good performance, though. Not bad, though. Not bad at all. Close, 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 close. What do you say we do one more? One more. I'm yeah. Down for that. God, it's already yeah. nine. We've been playing for two and a half hours. It feels like ten minutes. I know. Like Time I said, my husband. flies. Tell me to. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> yeah, I need to go because gonna... I didn't eat dinner. Kate ate dinner before the stream. I didn't, so I, I still need to eat something. I did. After I this. finished a podcast at six and then went downstairs med made and ate fettuccine alfredo and then came up here by 6 45. yeah today the last 24 hours have been a little much for me <laughs> there you go someone clips that uh buzzer beating uh golden egg stealing your in your chat trisha and you go back yeah. and watch the video tape take a look here thank you dante bogdan i think there was someone else i think i i, I, I think i think kate's right i think you got it out of there they grabbed you and it flung out of your hand right into the blue nest. Oh, it didn't fling out of Trisha's hand. Oh. Trisha got no. it out of the nest. She, she did. Got it out of the nest, and then, and then the yeah, that was nuts. No, that's that was uh, a game-winning assist. It was. It was. So it wasn't actually in your hands, but you bopped it out. It got yeah. into another player's hands. It then got glitched and was sent into your net. And I, and I think that golden egg was what made the difference. I think without it, you would have been knocked out. Ooh. For sure. Ooh. That was wild. So, that was remarkable. So many seesaws. I know, I'm it's, happy about it. It's the regular one. I love this. Yeah. There's some that like I rarely ever see or rarely ever encounter. Like right. uh, the regular fruit shoot I rarely ever see. Is that even a thing anymore? I, th I, think this, I don't think they var did a variant on fruit shoot. I think it's still just I the one version. I think they just upped the number of fruit. Yeah, I think uh, they made it more fruity. They made it fruitier. Mm hmm. Yeah. Now with 20% more fruit. <laughs> All right, I love this. I was literally, I mean, I'm going to jinx myself here, but I was literally talking about this earlier today, just how just how good for the soul it is to be, be out ahead of the pack and to run across flat seesaws. It does feel good, doesn't it? Oh, it's such a great feeling. This and hitting every door in DoorDash. That's harder oh. to do, though. Because you will eventually run out of luck on DoorDash. But if you get out ahead on Seesaw and just have a nice clean run... It just feels good. It's magical. Oh, no! Oh, dummies don't know how Seesaws work. All right. Okay, I mean, all the I'm going to be right. third, I believe, across the finish line. That's amazing. Just... Or second. I'll take second. Oh, it's I'm just so when more... When it's already so tilted and you're trying to even it out and more people jump onto oh, the seesaw, it's, it's like, what are you doing? There's no, no point The worst feeling that I have in this game, other than the last two seconds of a tail tag game, 
is when the seesaw is right at that tipping point where it's going to tip you. And you're like pushing against it going, please don't drop, please don't drop. But then it re you realize it's going to. Because yeah. more people jump on it. Yeah, exactly. Trisha's little, little pigeon here is weirdly glitched out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is it a cool... It, look, it just looks like it's kind of floating through the space. It's not. Oh no, it, it, it's fixed. It wasn't animating uh, for a second. Oh no, these are jerks. They are jerks. They're all jerks. Did you cross Trisha? No, she's still. Oh, she's were. closed. She's on you. the last set. Oh, yep. No. It still isn't auto spectating. They need to fix that too. Yeah, they do. That was I, I want the thing. player names more than anything. I really do. I want my names. I don't care back. about that so much. I appreciate people not. Um, not even gross seeing, names. Yeah, well, not the gross names, whatever. It's more that I appreciate the anonymity for, like, broadcasters. Mm, that's true. Okay, come on. Now that there aren't, like, a bajillion people. Nope, eliminated. Didn't but you it. guys keep going. That's the last one, so keep going. Um. Go, go, go. Okay. It's going to be yeah. 41, so it won't be a team. Nope. Oh, because it's not team if it's odd anymore, right? Correct. Yeah, so I'm thinking a really. Well, it can be or odd. It just has to be a, a divisible by two like or three. Like a hit parade, perhaps? Mm. It just can't be uneven teams. Right, correct. That was the thing that bugged me the most when you get like six on five, four ball or whatever, and that extra player would make the difference. I'm so glad yeah, they fixed that. That, that, was what, that was like my number one pet peeve. Hit parade. Hit parade. I saw another. I saw another really interesting strat on this yesterday, where somebody went down the side here and went through the side door rather than the door that opens in the center. That was like a totally yeah, different I strategy. Do that all the time. Well, I, I've, I've not seen it before. Oh, it's a good one. It's it's tough though, because if you get stuck, then you have to just wait for the next cycle. So sometimes uh, it's very good, and sometimes it's just not worth the timing. Right. Mm -hmm. Go guys, go! But if you can get out there first, like that's the thing. I think I think you need to be ahead of the pack. Oh, see. Go go go! This is the vanilla version. The one with the little turntables here, I don't like. I can get really messed up on that. Because that's one of those ones where if you get make one mistake, it's really hard to recover from because it just keeps batting you around. So I'm glad oh, it's man. not that one, at least. I might not qualify here. Come on. I just, I'm Gary. quite far back. Easy qual for me. Come on now. Where are you? Kate, go. I I'm getting bopped. You. Oh. Kate, you're you got it. You got like it. You got it. Yeah. Got it. Was that like 28 or 29? Kate, is your skin a constellation? It is. I love it. I really like space. In fact, yeah. for my birthday, I bought myself um, a little pendant for a necklace I'm going to make, and it's a piece of meteorite. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. It's from the oldest meteorite in the world, and it survived four ice ages. Where did you get that? I got it at a specialty dealer up at a place called, uh, like, a ski resort near me called Whistler. Cool. Where the Olympics were held. And... Um, cool. They just had like a selection of certified meteorite and they have been dealing with meteorite dealers for 30 years and had some really nice slivers of it and bought myself a little slice of space. That's cool. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's see if cool. I can survive this uh, early fruit shoot onslaught. Okay. I found Kate. Yeah. I just don't know what the strategy is on this level. Hug the sides is really. I don't think there's a lot more to it than that. Hug the sides and hope for the best. Hug, yeah, yeah, pray. And just keep going forward. Mm -hmm. Like, don't dive. Don't do anything like that. Unless you're, like, right here, and then you can dive just to get Got off it. the edge. But... There you go. Go Kate. Yay, go get Yay. it, go Kate. That wasn't so bad in the end. That was pretty good. It was 17, too, so it was a pretty good... Yeah, there's, there's a decent number of slots there. When that pops late and there's only like eight slots or whatever, it can be really tough. You mm -hmm. cannot afford to make a mistake. Oh man, I'm just looking at all these skins I feel like I've never seen before. They do a good job of rotating stuff in and out of the store every couple of days. 
like that pirate guy I've probably only seen once before and whoever the other like kind of half piratey person that kind of looks like a pirate wizard mm. all right here we go this has been a mixed bag for me lately i believe in you both you can do it i'm glad i'm Someone, already someone's got to do it i'm already looking at the ends Oh, it's go, over here on the side. Okay. Let's go, let's go. Okay. Oh, 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 I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm getting pushed a lot. There's a, it's, I mean, there's a lot of people here. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It's very pushy. Some very pushy people. It's not okay, four. It's, it's, not, it's not seven. Yeah, that person that's the pirate wizard, it, it was pushing on ahead. Could be one. It's, it's, it's one. Oh my god, I'm out. No! Oh, I'm not out! No, you made it. I'm insane. Great job! Man, just squeaking by yeah. there, but they all count. What are we looking squeaky at? Squeaky bum time, that's what you say. It's always squeaky yeah. bum time. This could be that's five right. on five, or it could be a final. Come on, team. I'm thinking, it's a I'm final. thinking five v five fall ball, and then a final. Let's see. I hope it's I hope it's fall ball because I like fall ball. Yeah. How do you? Is, someone in my chat just said, "Please no fall ball." No, oh, it's wow. fall mountain. How do you feel about new fall ball, Gary? With all the variations. It depends on the variation. Uh, yeah. Some I like more than others. But I played it, one that was just too much, and I was like, I feel like you would not enjoy that. O overall, I prefer the vanilla. Yeah. So there's no variant that I like better than the vanilla. And, and But some I'm, I'm like, whatever. Others I actively dislike. I fell already. I already stumbled. I got the early stumble. Now I have to compensate. Stumbled again. Yeah, I'm done. Kate's in the lead, though. She's looking good. Looking strong. I'm fuming. I'm having a decent oh, run shit. otherwise, but I'm not. The oh, early mistakes are going to cost me. I just threw it oh, away. It. I just threw it away. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, there's too many people up there. Yeah, there you go. That sucks. That was a very clean run up until right then. <sighs> Damn it. Well, two crowns for Kate. Oh, yeah. Yes. We've yet to have a crownless uh, episode of Talk, guys. Well, that's impressive. Oh, yeah. Long may the tradition continue. Right? <laughs> I uh, love it. I'm going to go back over here. So much fun. That was a ton of fun. Trisha, thanks so much for hanging out with us. You're always a delight to hang out and you, play games with. You guys are always so much fun, and I appreciate you both so much. I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your wit. I appreciate your charm. And I appreciate that you just want to play games with me sometimes. So thanks. Absolutely. Come Anytime. Back and, yeah, come back and play with us again. We'll get you that crown. We'll keep playing until we get you the crown. Someday. I have to just keep watching you guys to get all the strats so that I know and I can do better next time. You I believe well. in you. Thank you. Yeah, I got to keep practicing. I'm level 12 now, um, and this is the only platform I played on. So I haven't played that much, to be fair. That's You know what? That's not bad. That's still mm -hmm. not bad. It's okay. It is um, what it is. And you will find that once you get that first crown, once you kind of break that uh, that barrier, the rest will yeah. will the floodgates. Flow. Yeah, the spice will flow. Yeah, for sure. It's gonna um, get that first one under your belt. Trisha, is there anything that you would like to promote? Any place that people can find you online? I know you got a charity stream coming up. Tell I the do world. A charity stream coming up. Um, the best place to find me, honestly, is right here on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Trisha Hirschberger is my Twitch channel. My community is the Dragon Riders. We are, uh, I, I always pride myself in having one of the most inclusive and lovely communities on the internet. Um, so please come join us anytime. I'm, I stream for a variety of games, which as we found out tonight, I guess I stream a lot of games that make me cry or I cry <laughs> in a lot of games that should make you cry or something. Uh, but yeah, I stream everything from, I don't know, a Fall Guys to a Frostpunk to a Spiritfarer to Final Fantasy VII Remake. So a little bit of a little bit of everything. True variety in the sense of the word. But yeah, otherwise you can find me online at that girl Trish with no I in the girl. So that GRL Trish. But on YouTube and Twitch, it's just my name, Trisha Hershberger. Right, awesome. Very cool. Thank you so much for Thank playing you for being with us, here, Trisha. Trisha. Thank you guys for having me. This is so fun. Bye. We'll play again soon. Bye. Bye. 
All right, Kate, I think that about wraps it up for this week. I think so too. Shall we run the credits? We'll run our opening credits. We've got to do the three, two, one, right? Because we have to time this as well. And then I'm going to go raid Will. He's playing some PUBG. Um, that sounds good. Happy to, to raid a friend. All right, you ready to go? I am. Three, Always. two, one, go. Nailed it. All right, this is where we dance. All right, well, yeah, it's your choice. I choose to dance. Oh, that was all my dancing. Oh, I've still got more. No, I'm, I'm out. <laughs>